Good morning and welcome back to Sunset Beach. It's a gloomy, overcast morning, but the ladies are ready to attack. We saw Brisa, Sally, Molly Picklum showing up right here. Ross and Tatiana Weston Webb. Tyler Wright looking at the ice box. Woo, it's a chilly morning for that. And well, a little bit of rain, but the waves actually look really fun out there. My name's Strider Wasilewski, and I'm sitting here with a couple of legends. Megan Abubo, five-time champion on the CT, you know, jamming through a bunch of wins there. Thank you for coming down. And Peter Mel, obviously, rode the best wave ever ridden at Mavericks. <laughs> you're a legend. Good morning, Strider. And good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, you're right. The waves look fun. Again, even though it's a little gloomy, some rain, uh, it's damp, but I'll say that uh, the waves are looking actually pretty fun. I thought you were going to say, yeah, you're right. I did ride the best wave ever at Mavericks. I should have. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We are in for a treat because, like you said, well, actually, hopefully, it continues to roll because, you know, Professor Pete has been telling us that the waves, you know, are really fun out there. He was watching, ripping all morning, and I cannot wait to hear what we're going to get into today. AJ is with Renato Hickel at the moment. I am, and so we have the official call from Renato. What can we expect today? Well, AJ, so obviously it dropped a lot from yesterday. We're expecting that. Um, we're going to see the surface shifting from the sunset boat to the sunset point today. But today is still one of the best day on the remainder of the waiting period. So we got to make use of it. Um, we're going to start with the women round of 16, overlapping hits at 40 minutes. And we're going to leave the men's and the women's quarterfinals on the standby. Decision to be made later on. What are we looking for when we talk about what the decision is going to be based on for those standby rounds? Um, it's a fading swell. So is the swell is going to dictate. If the swell holds and is still there by the end of hit seven, I would say, of this round, we may opt to run some quarterfinal hits. If not, we'll pull the pin and we try again next time, probably next Sunday. All right. So at least we've got some women's uh, round of 16 in the water right now, Strider. Thank you very much, Renato and AJ. Sounds like we're going to play it by ear. We're going to run through this round. And just like that, we're going to take a look at the surf line forecast, Peter. Well, we have a decreasing swell, both from the northeast and the northwest, which was a mixed swell that we saw yesterday. But there's still the same kind of thing going on. It's just a notch below, right? It's still head high. We've moved over to the point. Um, ultimately, you can see that it's going to drop off through the day, but the winds are stay pretty good. And that's uh, a positive sign. And we've had, you know, this weird logo over the top of us. Um, it, it's created some kind of odd winds. You know, we had a bunch of rain last night, and it's going to be damp here today. We're kind of on the leeward of the weather side of Oahu. Uh, which is pretty rare because you don't usually get this suddenly flow like this. Today, you're going to see that the winds will drop off as well. Although you look over our shoulder, it's not that windy. Like it doesn't feel like it's 10 to 20 knots, at least uh, <laughs> here at sunset. So it's glassy already um, and it's very rippable, like tons of waves, fun waves looking out through the next couple days here. Uh, you got another bump up on Sunday. Uh, yeah, that's yellow. That means it's going to be pretty fun. So I think that that's a good way to go, but this, it's not going flat. So uh, we'll get it done at some point. It's going to look like a really, really fun day of competition no matter what. I, you know, we heard Renato talk about it. We had some amazing conditions yesterday out of nowhere, so I wouldn't be surprised if we get those again. But right now, off the point, Megan, I want to ask you, you know, yesterday it was all over the place, trying to pick a spot to surf. There was the inside bowl, there was the middle peak, there was kind of, oh, deep off the bowl or on the point. So today, it looks like it's a sure shot of where you're going to sit in the lineup. Yeah, I think today is going to be predominantly up at the point. The only chance you're going to have um, getting those wide ones might be on your paddle back out. There are a few um, we were watching earlier. There are a couple uh, nice sets coming through the middle, but they're just not really consistent. So I wouldn't put your money on it. Uh, I would definitely get your first couple of waves um, under your belt up at the point. You know, I, just looking at this long shot right here, Brisa Hennessy in the water, Sally Fitzgibbons, the match is on both of those surfers out there on Dennis Pang surfboards. Uh, you know, there's a there's a, a local shaper thing, you know, over here in Hawaii. Why is that? Oh, the waves are so conducive to uh, the way that the local guys shape, you know. Um, they just know how to fit the rocker into the, the wave. And also the amount of power that comes behind the surf here, I think that is really special and unique to our shapers. Um, everything from the blanks that they use to the amount of glass that they put on the board. Uh, so I think their expertise, a lot of guys will, um, and ladies will definitely lean on the local shapers. True, absolutely true. I mean, it's made in the environment, it's made for the environment, right? I mean, it's, you know, you get people that are making it in the islands. 
it's made for the surf that's here. You know, they've tuned it in, and it's all the way across the board. Like you said, the materials, the way it's glass, where the fin placements are, um, all of that factors into the uh, the higher energy. And then there's a different water feel, right? I mean, it feels a little bit different buoyancy wise. So your board and equipment is unique to this place. Well, Pete, I feel like uh, Megan kind of just sparked a little interest in some reporting for you. I haven't heard any glass talk from you, no? Yeah, like, no, a little bit. You know? There's some fins, things uh, we talked about. She kind of went up to you a little bit. Okay, cool. That's fine. No, Pete was teaching you some <laughs> stuff earlier, but, um, you know, and it's really unique, the shapers here in Hawaii. They have such a great relationship with one another. There's a lot of respect. Yeah. Uh, the older awesome. guys, Eric, um, Wade, you know, they're just... JC. Yeah, they, they right. JC, yeah. aren't you right? And they yeah. just really all communicate with each other. And I, I love the support that they have and, you know, how they support local Hawaiian shapers. Even when they go on tour, it's it's, it's neat. And they learn a lot of stuff, too, from yeah. other... If you ever come to Hawaii, actually go to the sugar mill and uh, go check out all of the board manufacturers that are down there. Here we go, up and riding into that lip. Floats it over the... Let's... Uh, Sally Fitzgibbons trying to get the board moving and it looks like they were super deep on the point right there. I mean, you could literally see the coral heads coming out of the water on so the battling, right side of the stream. It almost feels like, I mean, I was watching today too, it almost feels like there's a little current pulling up the point, which is kind of odd. You know, there's almost a reverse current happening. You, know, you can see that they're obviously pushing each other, but the, I saw that earlier. I'm like, whoa, there's a little, you know, a little current moving up the point. And it happens. We get that reverse current happening like it's place like Snapper Rocks. It'll, it'll happen can, tied. And, and you can see the wind kind of pulling across the lineup right now from your left to right. And I feel like that could be, uh, you know, bonus. simply from the, well, from the, when the, when the rain squalls come in, it pulls weather with it. And then as it blows through, the, it'll go back offshore. And a day like today, you really got to be careful when you're, when you're surfing the point and you're familiar with it, uh, you, your watch waves and you think, oh, I could sit a little bit deeper, yeah. but there's a fine line out here because it gets super, super shallow and it just shuts the wave down, right? So you want to make sure that although it looks like you can sit deep, you have to be on the right spot of the wave to make it happen, just like Sally's line up this wave here. Yep, Sally picking up an inside little nugget right there, which does a couple of setup snaps and looking for that wave to stand up in front of her. That one laying down a little bit, but you know what? She looked a lot more comfortable on that wave than she did on her first wave. So I feel like she was just trying to adjust to equipment maybe. Yeah. Uh feeling her board under her feet. I mean, the waves have been pretty substantial in size the last few days, so obviously downgrading on size and equipment, uh, Strider, she's uh, probably just trying to feel that out. True, you, you, you go out there too, you're gonna got an error of a little bit more foam at sunset no matter what. So sometimes you know, you're gonna be riding these smaller waves and the board's gonna feel a little bit big, so you're gonna have to push a little harder to get that uh, board to get to you know, maneuvering tighter arcs. Let's take a look at the head-to-head -head matchups between the two. Risa Hennessy, Sally Fitzgibbons. Sally's got her. She's got she's got a number on Risa, so that's you know got to be in the back of Risa's mind. Risa, she was the champion out here last year. She was on fire, so you know she's got confidence in knowing she can win. Sally's a, a fierce competitor, though, Megan. Yeah, Brisa is really um, experienced out here. She surfed a lot of heats, uh, not only in the professional career but her amateur career and then her style really suits the wave but Sally probably has more heats under her belt out here than anyone besides Steph Gilmore. I mean she was through that era of the Roxy pros that were here at Sunset for you know a good period of time it was a staple on, on the women's tour was, was Sunset Beach and then it kind of disappeared for a little while so um, it's good to be back I, I really love this venue on tour because it's just a, such a different challenge than a lot of the spots on on all of the events we have to go to. So it, when you have that diversity and styles of events, it's just so much more fun to watch because you get a like balanced world champion. You know, you're gonna get those, that final five, you're gonna get it. They have to surf every event well. You know, this is such a, uh, an open field. You know, there's, I don't think there's another wave that really compares to the, the, the diversity that you're going to find in one spot. Everything's compared to this, right? Oh, it's like Sunset Beach, you know, like Bells can be like Sunset Beach, you know, just in, in, that's the thing because it's one of those spots that's just renowned. Well, we got to catch up with Brisa on Sunset Beach. I actually grew up surfing Sunset a bunch. I remember when I was 10 years old, when I first moved to Hawaii, I started working with Kahea Hart and he's an incredible waterman and he dragged me out to Sunset when it was it was pretty huge and I felt like it's so ever-changing and 
our emotions are like the ocean and sunset. It, it can be flat one day and absolutely beautiful. And then it's, it's angry and scary and huge. And you have to embrace that. You have to embrace all sides of, of that. And uh, I connected with that. I saw myself a lot in sunset. Tie, tie yourself personally to the surf spot. It's, it's pretty, pretty cool. deep. It's deep. Yeah, yeah, it's I, cool. I, you know, you you have to you have to dive deep into that relationship. To be honest, I'm, and Megan, it's the X factor. It's all. Know, how, how's your relationship with Sunset? Did you dive deep into, you know, that relationship? Um, yeah, I actually had a house right across the street. Uh, I would just walk across the street almost every single day, um, check check the surf and just come out here no matter what from pretty much two to ten feet uh and there's a big community at sunset there's a lot of families that surf out here so you've i can see how brisa felt connected you know there's, there's the a only neighborhood ocean. in on the north shore really if you think about it right except maybe Pupukea, you're right and it's right? not vacation homes it's no, actually it's a neighborhood. neighborhood yeah so i mean it's the one it's it's a hub for sure i mean everyone's to the community there they all know and they're all watching out for everyone um, you know, everyone's lived on Sunset Point, right? <laughs> At some point, in, if you visited here. And you're right. <laughs> when, when I heard you earlier saying, Pete, you know, small Sunset Point can be like bells. Uh, it can be like a lot of different yeah. waves on tour. And I used to train out here a lot uh, for places like bells, for places like um, Margaret River, like yeah. every wave on tour because it does Has have a similar places. Right? right. And then you can go like to the backyard. Like the Sunset Point's like Rincon, you know, it, it kind of runs and yep. has that little, and, you know, and then there's the times where you're taking, getting beating like it's Margaret River. And it's a lot of paddling. You do a lot of paddling out there. So it's great training. And it's really one of the least crowded waves on the North Shore, um, if you ask me, because it's not as accessible as every single wave. Well, and there's also a lot of Vana on the reef in there. I mean, it's it, 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 it's through the you, scary thing out there. Have you been on that reef? No, it's I know. Not, it's not fun. No, I know. I, don't don't put your feet down. <laughs> Carissa Moore signing jerseys down here with Ray and Riley, our beach marshals. How cool are those guys? It's rad when you walk up. They know everybody's name. I guess it's their job, right? But uh, yeah, just so low key. I mean, they're at the Eddie doing stuff together, and it's like. They're filling in for Rabbit Cake High, Uncle yeah. Rabbit. Uh, they're, I mean, what a training you know, instructor, right? Rabbit was the best beach marshal ever. <laughs> One of my favorite moments was walking down to the beach and getting my jersey from Rabbit. Yeah. And your joke of the day. And right? your joke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there's some movement out here. We've got some action. You know, we've had a lot of uh, current, and, and we've had that, like, wind chip kind of pushing them over onto the point. Uh, and, you know, we're just waiting for them to line back up into... Uh, you know, the spot so they can get busy. Uh, you, do you get lost out there at all, Megan? Uh, you you can get lost, but you should have a game plan um, and have your land line up, right? Uh, and when it's at the point, it's definitely a lot different than regular sunset. So I have my little lineups, my houses that I like to sit in front of out here. Uh, but there are two peaks to me. There's a deep sunset point and a wide one. And I prefer the wide um, part of sunset point because uh, you can actually get some nice open face carves and you don't have to start your wave off like going down the line as much as you do when you sit deeper. Nice, I like that, dropping in and drawing a, a nice rhythm into the wave instead of having to speed down it. It's, it's, I mean, every single spot has their best waves, right? So you have to understand where those best waves are. This is a, a pretty crazy break because it's so sensitive to angles. Um, you know, with the swell angles and so forth. And then right now we still have two angles of swell still. The northeast kind of runs down the point that'll actually draw you up the point because you'll see these peaks kind of coming up and lifting up at Boneyard. So you're like, oh, you chase it. And then all of a sudden the west set will come and the west set's actually the best wave and you've been too far up the point. So it's, it's unique because you do, even though it's smaller playing area than we've been used to for, let's say yesterday, it's still a challenge to, to get those best waves and be in the right spot because you, you can get too deep pretty easily. That's why I think this is a good first heat, actually, for the other um, girls that are surfing in this round, because Brisa probably knows this wave better than anyone, and Sally is no stranger out here. So where they're sitting is a pretty great spot. It's just there have, haven't been too many sets roll through during this heat so far. Yeah, I was just I was piping it up like it's all on fire out there, and all of a sudden, <laughs> sure enough, the horn goes, and you're like, oh. Sorry, Pete. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I saw plenty of fun waves, though. <laughs> yeah. There was. There was yeah. I mean, there's... Yeah. And there will be. Okay. Yeah. And right now, you we're going to get to... Our man, Richie Porta, our, our judging expert. Richie, good morning. Good morning, boys, and Megan, how are you? Good morning. 
Uh, we're doing great. We're down here, and it's a little overcast, but we've got some waves on hand. We wanted to just check in with you on on judging out here and and the you know criteria. Yeah, sure. Well, obviously, it's a whole different game from yesterday with the size and the location, and so the judges have to adjust, and they will do so throughout the day. It's, it, they'll set their scale already. You know, there's not, hasn't been much of any consequence so far, but. Um, it's all about the comparison. So they, once again, they live in the heats that they're in. They they wipe yesterday off the board because it's nothing like yesterday. And as you guys have been talking about, there's still some really good waves out there. And Sunset Point does have the ability, like Sunset, the whole area. There's really good waves and there's some really average waves. Let's have a look at this one. It's it's going to be, you know, it's it's a matter of finding those critical sections, and that's what the judges want to see. And you can get some really critical waves at the point. It's not as bad as everyone seems to think. I think it's actually hitting some quite good waves. So we've had two of right waves right now, and we'll see the scale that the judges are going to utilise for the rest of this round. And the surfers, you know, they're, they're really far out in the water. Uh, you know, how do you guys deal with that up in the, the judges' tower? Yeah, they have a couple of spotters up there, and, and the job of the spotters is to just watch the surfers so when one surfer's up the spotter as you can see there the spotter is not watching the surfer riding the wave they're watching the surfer that is left out the back waiting to catch the next wave and um, they'll call the wave it reds up whites up and the judges will be scoring a wave and if, if something happens quickly that's the spotter's job is to preempt the wave they don't wait until they're up they go reds paddling reds up and that gets the judge's attention on the surfer that's riding. Now, if both of them are riding, like we saw just then, that's when the replay comes into, into play because the last thing you want to do is be guessing as a judge, so they use the replay to check the scores that they've just written down just to make sure it's all exactly what they saw and they didn't miss something by watching one surfer over the other. So the spot is crucial to the whole concept. Nice. Well, thank you very much. I think Peter Mel's got a question for you, Richie. Good morning, Rich. Hey, I just wanted to say, if you, did you watch yesterday's action and how did you feel like the judging was um, you know, overall for the day? Yeah, I did watch yesterday and it's, it's, it was a great day, let's be honest, and it was a surprise one. See, that's why Mother Nature and the surf you never can trust because things happen, right? And once again, the crucial aspect of yesterday was for the surfers Firstly, wave selection, but also board selection, because what the judges want to see is the surfers fitting into those sections and driving through the rails. And I was interested to see that in the criteria, because you guys get sick of me banging on about holding your rail through your turns, and that was in the criteria yesterday. So the judges wanted to see that power surfing, but done with control and not out of control. And I saw a couple of boards that were the wrong size board for me, um, but I saw some really nice looking boards and some really great surfing in some critical sections. And that's all the judges are always chasing are those combination major manoeuvres in the biggest sections they can find on the day. And yeah, it was a cracker of a day and, and we'll see how we go today. All right, well, thank you, Richie. I appreciate your time. I'm sure we'll get you back in there for some more an analysis on what's happening and we're gonna get back to the live action. Have a great morning. Looks like Brisa's looking at something in here. She's just finding a nice little wave, actually. That thing's got a, a nice line on it. And two huge gouges in the face right back to the corner. And she's going to kick out. Nice two-turn combo right there. I feel like, you know, she, she comes down to the beach uh, with her, her boards every day. Uh, you know, yesterday, obviously, she had her old faithful. And today, she's got to, you know, size it down. That must, must be a big difference. Yeah, uh, but I really like how she she's looking loose on that board. Uh, she doesn't look like she's sliding out, skidding out. She has a lot of control, as Richie was uh, mentioning earlier. And she's seeing things that we're not seeing. You know, she took off on that wave. You can see it right here. Um, she sets herself up, does a nice little off the lip there, uh, and then is really just trying to look for that section, that critical section here, um, and to finish this wave off. And she actually finds herself a nice little turn here on the inside as well. Risa working 
that inside angle, and then this one for Sally Pete. Uh, and this is the outside section. I think this is where the first exchange, or maybe a little. No, this is actually the second wave. You're right. So this is actually a, a three, what eight three for for Sally. Um, the outside section a little steeper. Um, wow, I'm trying to think of the comparison. Pretty similar. Look at that arc, dude. That was sick. I love that thing. She threw it right in there. A lot of power and engaged the rail and the fins. You liked it. That was. I, I really like that. I like that. It was well. It was opened up. The body, you know, arms open and. and Really coming into form she got right there. the better there. of the exchange. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, that all the points were in that turn. I I liked it too. It was full rail uh, carve out there. Um, not a super big wave, but just really laying it all the, on the line there. So we, uh, you know, I love the the point and the deep uh, sections out there. And you know what? I think we're going to be seeing a lot more great waves coming in as this thing rolls out. We'll be right back here at the Hurley Pro Sunset Beach with more overlapping action. The Hurley Pro Sunset Beach is brought to you by Hurley, official apparel brand of the Hurley Pro Sunset Beach. And by Yeti, built for the wild. I'm Kelly Slater. I committed my life to this, you know, all of this. There is so much pressure now. It's really do or die. He's not coming here to participate. He's coming here to win. Her career is at stake. You want to perform in the big stage? This is the biggest stage you can have. Oh, my goodness. This is sport history. Make or Break has dropped. You can check out the first four episodes and binge it out. I love it. That's what I do. I just go in there and I just sit down. I watch all of them in a row. Molly Picklam, Isabella Nichols, two Australian battle. It's going to be fun to watch <laughs> these two surfers go out there. They're both feisty and they love to get the inside and they love to have uh, the, you know, their domination in the corner there. It's going to be a good battle right there. Oh, yeah, they're both, they're, they both are are feisty competitors, right? They're they're into it to win, um, and this is going to be a fun matchup. You know, I think that Isabella Nichols up against the youngster Molly. She, you know, is kind of graduating to that sophomore kind of area of her career, uh, and then you got the youngsters Molly, and this is where you need to beat these you know surfers that have been having great success. Molly has uh, came onto this tour in a gangbuster. She's definitely one of the competitors that a lot of this draw would would dread having in their heat. Yeah, she, wasn't she impressive last week? Uh, just watching her surf and being you know, so young, but just so aggressive. I'm excited to see her take that, bring that to sunset. <laughs> Look at them following each other around in the lineup and, and making sure that they don't leave each other alone. Isabella Nichols trying to make sure that she stays on the inside, but look at how far up the point they, they yeah, are. They're, they're in there. boneyards right there. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stuff I love, all right? So we were talking about it, you know, setting this heat up, but now you actually get to see what we were talking about. You see the boils out yeah, there, That's Pete? boneyard. That's that's the holes. That, that's not an area that's very, you know, it's not flat. It's got... And um, the, the, the heavy thing about it, Pete, is when you go to take off on a wave, you think, oh, I'm in the great yeah. spot. And then all of a sudden you look over the ledge and you're like, whoa, it's totally dry. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's full river rapids. So they're, they're definitely in a zone that is... Um, there is a wave, quality wave out there sometimes. But they're all. They're, what's going to happen is if a wave comes to that top part of the head, they're going to jam to the left, and uh, you know whoever waits the longest will have inside <laughs> position, right? But yeah, it's a fine line. Have you ever? Have you ever? Uh, you know, touched the reef out there, Megan? Oh gosh, how many times have I not? <laughs> it's, 
it's shallow. Well, you grew up it's, across the street, right? Like you spent a lot of time at Sunset Point. Yeah, and it's it's that leaf is that that leaf that reef is alive. Um, you know, you just in the summertime it's super colorful. You know, we know that the reef there, there's like you said, there's a lot of vana. And it's here. it's a different it's different than other parts of the reef all on the North Shore. It's way more spicy. It's got some you know little claws in it, and it's wild because there's not a lot of reefs that are like that here on the North Shore. And that has to do with um, yesterday. Kaipo was talking about the Pamalu Stream. That has to do with that sh- freshwater stream. You know, um, because it comes out. There's yes. a it comes out right there. There's a big pipe outfall right there, which is all fresh water. So it just kind of mixes with it, and it just makes this nice little raw like sharp reef. Crazy on. I, I like it. I, I know. I, I was out there surfing with a buddy, and, and he just scraped his foot. He took off a little deep, and he ended up having Vana in his foot. You know, there's a lot of, of urchin out there, and it's there's, there's no joke up on that back corner as the ladies are trying to battle in. Here's the virtual eye coming in to Oahu, and we're going to fly out to Sunset Beach where we have our venue. It's all set up, and it's where you'd rather be. Beautiful beach. Absolutely fun. And talk, take us through the different spots there, Pete. Well, I mean, you think about where this spot is in relation to the Seven Mile Miracle, which is the North Shore. We're at the top, right? We're at the corner where it kind of starts to turn the corner here around V-Land side. Uh, it goes down to the east side, which is windward side. So we're at the top of it. We're kind of the swell focus area. So a lot of the energy that comes from the northwest is feeding right in here. And of course, the deeper water, which is these two channels, also helps to kind of center the energy. And it just focuses around it and sends it right onto the shallow reef. You've got that uh, little upwelling spot right there, which actually jacks it up. And it doesn't have a lot of outer reef outside of it. Like Pipeline has all these different reefs outside of it. And that's what kind of makes it so peaky and uh, and, and hollow, whereas here it's a big open ocean, so it's deep water in comparison to the shallower water spots on the North Shore. Thank you, Pete. Except for the point. <laughs> it's shallow there. <laughs> Here we go. Dropping in Isabella Nichols. She's coming around the corner and she's going to try and connect this one all the way across. She's got movement and she's out. That's that northeast. It'll just grab the top of the point and kind of split it in half. You'll see these little wedges that'll come. You know, and you have two swells. We were touching on this this morning, just uh, privately cut, cut uh, Strider, um, about how swell energies, you know, that even though they're sometimes at different intervals and different directions, they can combine on the reef, right? So you'll see that two swells will actually create a kind of a special wave. And it's just unique because you're getting these combinations of the two different swell energies meeting into one wave. The only problem works. with that, Pete. Oh, now you're going to tell me a problem with it. You're you can't count you. on it. No, you can't. You're right. I agree that they're out there. Yeah. But in a heat, you can't look for the two waves that are converge and make That's the why you've got to be <laughs> focused 100% in your 40 minutes and, and hope that that, I mean, and hope you find the rhythm that you're on that piece of the reef when that wave does, you know, the little unicorn wave. Yeah, and a day like today, you, there there aren't a lot of unicorns out there, so you really just gotta put together your 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 no game rainbows plan. today. No, I, honestly, I think we're gonna day see like some today, rainbows. Okay, later this afternoon, it'll clear up. Your objective should be like, you know, go out there, get two waves that I can do two to three turns on. <laughs> it should be your objective today. Oh, that wave out the back there looked really good. I that's mean, that thing was like, piping off the point. It's I mean, that oh, it's really you're gonna get shallow this, though too. Right? stuff it's going to kind of come and it's going to break apart it's like it's, it's you're right pete you can't um bank on it you can't sit there and waste half your heat waiting for that unicorn wave coming through right you know it's funny i i kind of po- pose the question to you megan that oh, it's not a hard lineup today but i'm watching it and it is a hard lineup because there are different waves out there it is sunset point's not a, w- a wave also that any of these girls decide oh i'm just going to go surf sunset point today when rockies is like four feet and firing right so it's a wave that takes discipline, um, patience, a lot of patience, and really that knowledge to understand the reef out there. This is an understanding of why uh, it's not that crowded all the time. It's because everything at four foot, when the point's breaking, everything else is really good on the North Shore, right? So you spread everyone out. Most definitely. <laughs> well, Laura Enever, she's over in the Red Bull VIP hangout zone, the athlete area. What do you got for us? Hello, guys. Yes, a little, little drizzly down here, but the vibes are still very high. We've got focus going on all around look at the, the girls are just eyeing out, eyeing off the point out here and i was speaking to micro molly's coach before heading out and he was just saying you know best thing molly can do is just really know where she's at on, on the reef you know understanding that and knowing all like at all times where she is looking at her lineups and creating space under priority in the non-priority heat so looking at the girls positioning now 
You know, the, first, the second heat, sorry, is, is sitting way further up the point in the first heat. Looks like there's some lines coming through now, so we'll see if they can, uh, you know, try get something. But also, you know, trying to find a way that's got a big closeout end turn. You know, you'd have to sit way further up the point to try and get one of those to try really be able to hit an oncoming section. So I'm excited to see what these girls can do. And, uh, you know, Micro did say, um, you know, he's going to send Molly into some big lefts, but I worked <laughs> out he was joking. <laughs> <laughs> I was gullible though. I was like, really? Really? There's laughs. Yeah, yeah, she's got a good backside. I saw a couple laughs out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we saw Yago go left and, and get a big score, so anything can happen today. Well, today, if you go left, it might be right onto those coral heads, so Honestly. we got to be careful. Here's look at all this, this water moving out the back. Finally, we're going to see all those waves we saw this morning approach, and I think that the ladies are going to be a lot of position because they were inside trying to find those, whatever they could. Uh, this is a lot of water moving out the back. This is more reminiscent to, to yesterday, which is something which we were surprised by. And now today, look at these big bombs coming in, Pete. Yeah, it, I mean, there's still a little swell in the water. And it's, in North Shore, you know, that's like we touched on why it's special. I mean, you're sitting, you're a little speck in the middle of the Pacific. You've got no continental shelf. Um, so you're going to get energies that are going to, you know, that's why sometimes it'll be four to 10 feet. You know, like, well, hey, it's not four to 10 feet. Yeah. Well, this is going to be two to six feet today because you're going to get these sets that move outside or move towards the channel. You're going to have to pay some dues. Here we go. Paddling into this one. Molly Picklum comes off the bottom. Bang! Right into that vertical section. That was actually a, an amazing turn for a frothy wave. It's so hard to negotiate hitting the lip. She's going to stick with it, hoping for something to stand back up on the inside. And it doesn't, so she's going to kick out of that one. But one big turn out the back. That was a, a great maneuver on a wave that under priority. So not having the priority heat to actually stack up some points. Uh, we saw it all day yesterday. That helped out the surfers. If you could get some points on the board, Megan, you know, before your heat. Yeah, you see Molly here. She sets herself up for a really nice turn, really critical section there. Uh, but this is something that we're going to see a lot happen today on some of those north sets. It doesn't have that double up. Um, has a beautiful first section for you. Nice off the lip there. Huge turn here. Really critical. But waves like this, this is all they're going to have to offer. Uh, there's not a lot on the inside after that turn. That wave was you know, over her head when she hit the lip there. And you know that thing is, it has a lot of water in it. Here we go, Brisa. Looking for the inside. Almost went for a tube. She's pushing around that corner, looking for something so she can get a maneuver off. And there she goes. She has a nice little spin toss into the lip, and she's out. Risa is actually holding on to the lead right now, but Sally doesn't need much. I mean, such a small score to get into the driver's seat with 9.45 on the clock, Megan. Yeah, both of these surfers uh, really looking to put a good score on the board. They have pretty mediocre scores. So uh, right now it's going to come down to wave selection. You see, I believe, Sally. Sally, she glides in. Nice turn on the open face. And that's all it's going to be one time. Been Kicks a quiet out. 10 minutes, right? I mean, for that priority heat, you know, we saw a couple of waves being ridden by the non-priority heat, which is built Zivel and Molly sitting up deeper on the point. It's a little shallower up there, so there's going to be more wave opportunities to grab. You know, you are you're trying to find some sort of scrap up the top of the point just to get a score. And look at Molly did that exactly. Uh, just that one solid maneuver. The transition on the lip was a point of difference, and it's the best number we see for both heats. Yeah, 5.0 drops in for Molly Picklum, and, you know, rightfully so. She attacked the lip line on a, on a consequential section that really stood up in front of her, uh, you know, and, and we heard Richie Porter talking about that, our analyst for the judging panel. And, I, you know, Megan, how has have things changed on the judging criteria, or have they changed since you were on tour? Oh, the judging has changed tremendously, I think, for the better. Uh, again, you can do a huge turn like that and get a five. So you can have that confidence in your arsenal that, like, I just need to pull out a big turn. Here we see Sally. Uh, these are tough waves, right? Um, start off with a couple of cutbacks here strider uh the cutbacks but i like the second one was really clean actually fit the board into the transition really well so i she i think she's could come close to getting the score that she needs to actually jump up into the lead yeah there haven't been a lot of waves ridden in this heat but 
I, you know, judging, it, it is tough. You start the wave off with a cutback um, and then into another one. Although as nice as Sally's cutback is, it's not super critical. So that's the difference, right, with Molly's wave. Brisa Hennessy, it's her turn. There goes that driving cutback you were talking about. Another one looking for a closeout section. Little tap off the white water. And this wave looks like it's standing back up for her. So beautiful wave choice right there. Wow, this is going to be close. Um, you know, Sally's probably going to improve on the 243 with hers. And it uh, feels like Risa actually probably going to get the best wave of the exchange, right? Or the whole heat. So a uh, battle back and forth here with seven minutes to go. And uh, this is going to be a pretty exciting back half of the heat. Here comes. Stephanie Gilmore with Tommy Whitaker. I love that. I love that you hear him. When the sets come, you know what kind of score you're going to get. So just, yeah. To have that Ooh. confidence, right? Isabella Nichols, she hits the lip, drops over the lip line as it falls in, and she's out of there. But Isabella Nichols and Molly Picklum on the non-priority heat, they're, they're going to search out whatever they can up there on the point, Megan, you were talking about it. Does, you know, does that rhythm help to, in the transition into your priority heat? Uh, it definitely does. Uh, in the priority heat, though, you really you have the ability to catch whatever wave you want, right? So you want to make sure that you put all your money on those cards that when you see a wave, like, you have to think in your mind before you even take off and paddle, like, is this going to give me a score? Is this worth my energy and time before you even really commit? We're still waiting on Sally's score. Yeah, so this is an important exchange, too, for Risa and Sally. Because it, both these scores probably are going to go in their top two. And at this point in the heat, uh, you know, now it's going to establish what the strategy is for this last few minutes. At the moment, Sally does have priority. She was able to get out there a little quicker. Molly Picklum off the bottom, straight up into the lip. And comes a little off kilter. Yeah, a little loss she of comes control. out of it, yeah. She did tag the lip, but it didn't have the control. She kind of like got pushed out of it and a little off balance. And judges take note of those little off balances, similar to a gymnastics routine. You know, if you land and don't stick it, like all of that stuff kind of factors into the performance. We have a subjective judging panel. There's five judges up there. They're all scoring all waves in both heats. Sally rolls in. I feel like she's really comfortable out here on these type of waves. I feel like she's got a. She's on a Glen Pang. A nice flow, too. I. I Maybe I'm just so used to seeing her surf on open face rights. What's cool about Sally and, and Glenn the Peng and the TNC is that Sally rides these boards all over the world, right? And I think it's one of the few. I mean, we see a lot of Pangs here in Hawaii, but uh, to see them all over on tour is pretty cool. Wow. That was a nice turn from Isabella Nichols right there. Straight on a set up. wave. Yeah, on a bigger wave and, and, the, and connecting to the inside. So doing some follow-up work and trying to find something else as it as it glides through. Yeah, that was a nice wave, wasn't it? Um, that was the first wave we've really seen that was, you know, a little overhead and gave her a nice wall to be able to open up. I, I like where her and Molly are sitting, actually. Um, I, I like they have a little more critical section on their waves. And, and but the, again, so they're sitting apart from it. But if you think about where they're positioned, right? Like if they get a good wave that's going to connect all the way through and the other surfers who have priority are sitting on the corner, they can take those waves away, right? So you got to be careful of that. We saw interferences here before. So even if you're in another heat, you got to know that. And like if you see a big section in front of you and all of a sudden you see something dropping in, they're going to have priority. Here's a 357 of Sally Megan. Yeah, it starts that off with a cut back. But as you said, Strider, looking really sharp on those boards, just laying it all on rail, um, looking so smooth and comfortable out here, too. Well, and I thought, you know, this is funny because this one came in as a 3-3, and Sally's came in as a 3-5. Uh, you know, more maneuvers done here by, by Brisa, but not as strong, not as laid over and um, as quick in transition and held. That was the one thing I think that was brought to our attention, and it really is unique to Sunset Beach. It just sets this big open face. Uh, they want to see you hold your rails, right? And the and the judges will, and the and the surfers went to that criteria yesterday, and I think it'll happen here today. But holding those rails, you're going to get rewarded for that. So utilize them. That's what they're there for. Lay them over. Yeah, I think so. the point of differentiation with their cutbacks right now is that Sally's doing that full arc, 
Yeah, and, and driving through too, right? I mean, uh, well, that was nice. A little up and over, critical. She had to adjust her feet. But again, those little adjustments, a little loss of control will be noted. But ultimately, she was hoping for a nice little double up in here. And got the cutty, but went into some deep water at this point. Sometimes you'll see it'll stand up in there. Here's yeah. a slow-mo, Megan. Look at this, setting herself up perfectly straight up into the lip. Tons of water displaced off her fins. Well, you can see how her foot shifted. That's what happened. It's when she like aired out. Oh yeah, right her there. Her front foot like went to the side rail, and then it came back almost a little too far, and she finally adjusted it right in the middle. And so there's actually two. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> right there too. <laughs> a lot going on. So disconnecting from her board, but coming down with the maneuver. Isabella Nichols going to get the highest score of the heat so far for that one big turn. Here we go, Brisa looking for more. Nice critical section, that's what she was looking for. There we go, there's the nice deep gouge in the pocket. So, Brisa Hennessy, she's fighting back. She, you know, she's last year's champion out here. She does not want to lay down in this heat and she is just pushing hard off those fins. She's looking for a 3-8-3. Three, three. I think she's gonna get the lead. Uh, you know, yeah. it's not gonna be a huge number, but just the fact that a smaller wave at the turn was, uh, it had that wow pop kind of to you you know you saw it you're like whoa that came out there that's nice that was a nice arc yeah 100%. she has that in her arsenal she has that snap she hasn't really gone to it in this heat and you can see it here she takes off but she's setting herself up here with so much speed and just a huge snap in the pocket there i will say that that like moment right and it being so far away and the judges see that moment it, it definitely it leaves an impression so i, I feel like this is going to be a pretty good number sally wants to fight She's not done yet. Pushing out on that open face, waiting for the wave to stand back up. Putting a few maneuvers in, and then the wave still going, but letting her down a bit. Behind her, Isabella Nichols is gonna find a nice open face. Great wave choice, gouging into the corner. So great surfing right here from Isabella Nichols. Finds a really critical oh. section and goes down as the board disconnects and she can't regain her composure on that one. Well, the so, end of the That was heat. unfortunate right there because that was a really great wave. Yeah, it was, especially that section. Um, but, you know, that was the best section of the wave. It just doubled up and it was all clean from the wave before. So a bit of a mistake there for Isabella. This thing's winding down. These next scores dropping in. Only 15 seconds left on the clock right now. And Brisa Hennessy looking for a score. Sally was trying to fight back. But, you know, they're going to be waiting on this in the water. So the drama is going to build. We got one score dropping in saying it's enough. 4.5. It was pretty confident. 4.8. I think it's going to come through enough. And looks like, you know, I'm not going to say it yet, but. Yeah, she's going to get it. But that doesn't mean we still, have, we still have another number for Sally, that last set wave. And then she didn't really get the opportunity to dig it in, but she, it was a bigger wave. Uh, and she completed it, rode it all the way to the inside. So we'll have to take a look at this replay here. So at this point now, Sally needs a four, what, four, three, five? Four, three, five, she's jamming down the line, guys. You know, and that laid down big time right there, and you're like, oh no, but then it started to load back up. And then she gets this nice little floater, good flow on this way, but is it the four, three, five? I would say, uh, feels like it might be just a touch shy. Here's the 4.6. Way smaller wave, but we've seen that the higher impact maneuvers are gonna yeah. score are better than even just a wave that you have a lot of flow and a little, you know? I don't know, I mean, it'll be close, but. Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that, Pete. Uh, she had a bigger wave, but I don't think she had the opportunity to really light it up as much because it was a little softer. Yeah, and it and laid down. the wave down. had a flatter surface, oh, it right? Fully so laid down, she chased it, it had the speed, her. the wave laid down, again, needing a four, but yeah, the first score is starting to come in here, it's, it's gonna be shy. Yeah, well. Dang it. Scores are, are trickling in. Sally Fitzgibbons is going to bow out here at Sunset Beach. Unfortunate for her. Well, I had Sally kind of a little under, dark heart. I was trying to figure Brisa or Sally. And I was like, oh, Sally needs to have a result. She does well. At, well, that wasn't a good call, unfortunately, there. But Brisa, congratulations to her because she turned it at the very end. Sounds like Peter Mel just lost a, <laughs> a, a fantasy <laughs> I surfer did. off of his list. And we'll be right back, right here at the Hurley Pro Sunset Beach.
this is our community, this is where we live, this is where I've grown up, and it means a lot for them to be here supporting this and bringing everyone around here back to what it means to be connected to the land. What we kind of formed here is these little islands, and the idea is for to create habitat for the birds to nest. So thanks for helping us out to restore this today. Appreciate it. Yeah. You know, Hawaiian land is so special and it's so prestigious and unique, so we want to keep it that way. It's our job and you know our responsibility to give back and to connect with, with each other. We're stronger together. I'm going to go plan one for Larry. The WSL grant will really help to provide funds to get a compost machine to reduce food waste around the North Shore. Tell us what you're doing by posting on social media with the hashtag WeAreOneOcean and tagging WSL and WSL Pure in your post. We are one ocean. Well, Brisa's on the beach, and she is victorious over Sally Fitzgibbons here at Sunset Beach. And she was out there planting all kinds of different stuff to you know, restore the, the native plant here on the North Shore. And the greatest thing about it is, you know, with WSL Pure getting involved at every location, just to try to give back, to bring back, and to show that they care. It's a really cool thing. I, I was able to participate in a lot of different We Are One Oceans one, but this one for me was pretty cool because you actually had a full on, it was like, there was almost too many people. Like we had 50 people there, right? And they're all, we we're all weeding and uh, you know planting native plants and to have Jack involved and see how stoked he was, that buzz across and Daniel, like and how passionate they are about that little piece of land, it's amazing. It really is. And it's gonna be a special place, I believe. It's gonna be a pretty special place for people to go and visit and learn and educate themselves. Um, I, I you know I, I can't wait to see what goes from the future and it's just so simple, you know, and uh, thank you, cool. Pete. That's great to hear that there was, you know, some like that energy that Support. you guys Big you know, time. found over there and, and here we go. Isabella Nichols is following up Stephanie Gilmore. Not a lot of uh, scoring potential on those last two waves but getting the board going here we go again out the back look like a paddle and a pull out unfortunate i mean back to pete we might have a surfer here so i don't want to go too far down the line yet nope um Wait. stephanie looking Steph. on the inside hey, the action i love it stephanie up and riding Beautiful turn back into the oh. bowl that goes over the handlebars. Not that that way was going to give her much more, but they won't deem that maneuver complete. The interesting, you know, step out in the water with Tommy Whitaker, a couple of boards in the water. You know, which boards is she, is she riding out there is, is the question. It's, uh, you I know, didn't see her in the warm up, right? I was I had eyes on the water for the warm up, and uh, I, I didn't see a lot of the women actually on the warm up, uh, interestingly enough. But uh, I would say that this maybe, I mean, knowing Steph, she's probably just going straight out there. You know, just watching the lineup is more important to her than actually going out. Because she's confident in her equipment. During the break, that was Molly Picklum. A couple of turns, pushing through the white water. Well, she's got a backup number right here. She found that section. I mean, she actually made that a backup number just by staying with it. That's what makes molly so gnarly is that she's so determined and she does not give up on anything not in her 40 minutes in the water not on her waves not on her maneuvers not on her bike riding she <laughs> went flying by me twice on the bike path i felt like i was just grandpawing but it was a difference in generations as you, you were <laughs> yeah i was grandpawing hard but. yeah and you were like cruising cruise. yeah no that's cool and she was training right i got an different. old bike and the chain pops off so i don't want to go too fast it <laughs> sounds like a metaphor all right. <laughs> but Isabella's got the lead right now, and it's a, a slight lead. So this is where you're going to see Molly with the you know priority heat. It's going to be an important point in the heat for her. Has priority. Um, needs you know, a pretty good number, considering what we've seen today. Well, you know, I mean, Isabella had that great outside turn on that beautiful wave. And she was, you know, she found that unicorn, so to speak, Pete, that we, you guys were talking about. And if you get a wave like that and you perform, you know, you're going you're gonna to put up the highest number that we, we, we've seen so far today. And here she is again, trying to back it up. Oh, she just didn't see that set outside of her um, before she took off on that wave. But I like, again, I like their positioning out there. Uh, they're sitting on the most critical part of the wave as we see Steph catch a wave right here. It's interesting because it's a swap of the heat before, right? They, they stayed in the same spot they're at now up on the point. Here we go. 
Molly Picklum catches a little lip in the face, so shakes it off, dives under. She'll go back out there and try and find something else. This Meanwhile, the stuff's just she, staying busy, right? Yeah, Tried they're looking. It. You can see they're hunting, and I I like that. You know, dropping anchor and not catching waves, and it kind of puts you out of rhythm. I feel. Like. Zoe McDougal, this is her opener. Nice. Z Off the top. Zoe's um, gonna be lethal out here. I mean, look at look at this turn. She knows this wave super well. Local girl. Um, look at that. Just so much style, poise. Nice size wave too, huh? Like, yeah. Well, she's got to look at the number. Like that's a pretty yeah, good she, solid. Yeah, that dropped in at a at a four point five seven. Uh, you know, and it, it's interesting because. We talked about this. All of the surfers in the non-priority heats getting rhythm seem to carry it through into their priority heat and take the win. Yeah, and I think it's that connection with sunset. Um, you're, fi you're, you're finding that rhythm of the ocean. So why would that be any different, right, in a, a Manama heat? I, I think that you're definitely just going to carry that over. Well, I think that Laura has been sharking around over there in the Red Bull athlete area and finding out some information. Well, guys, this interesting note on Zoe. She started on the bowl, which we haven't seen any of the ladies do this morning. So, you know, her and Steph, Steph was way up the point. Zoe was on the bowl. We've seen, you know, every 10 or so minutes, a, a bigger set coming through and it's actually hitting wide, you know, but that's a hard sort of risk to take. But under, you know, in the non-priority heats, I think it was a pretty smart thing for Zoe to do. She knows this wave, it's her local spot. And, you know, I'm watching her now intently, just watching the lineup and, you know, shooting over. Uh, even right now, she's making a move. But uh, Steph started up the top and now she's moved closer to Zoe. And now, you know, she's moving back up the point. So it's a real, you know, cat and mouse out there to really work out where you want to try to be in tune with these sets. Thank you very much, Laura. Yeah, it's such an interesting point. You can see how wide Zoe's sitting. Uh, you know, that's a... That's a I think uh, it's ball. She said it this morning. She's like, it's a huge difference. No, uh, it's... I've had many heats this size um, with the north swell on the point. And one year, um, Reynos was my caddy. And, you know, it was such a tough decision. But he's like, Megan, just sit wide, sit wide. And you really only need those two waves. And it paid off. I won my heat. Um, but you have to be patient. You have to be steely in right. your nerves. and Especially not when you're watching your competitor get, you know, up on the point, getting a free reign to do whatever they want. It's a risky move when you surf away from your competitor. It always has been, right? Especially when you're well one-on-one, -on -one, right? You, you got to beat that one on you know, that other surfer, and if you're just giving the opportunity to ride whatever wave you want, whatever wave they want, you're risking it. You know, and so it's always smarter to kind of play, unless you're so confident that those waves that are coming to where you're sitting and uh, that and they're going to come. You know, you kind of just have to play those odds. Well, sometimes it plays out and it's successful. Here we go, Stephanie Gilmore. Nice little slice, and she's out down on the glass right now. Last year's champion here at Sunset Beach. Risa Hennessy is with AJ. Risa, the defending champ here at Sunset. You make it out of this first heat of the day. What were you trying to accomplish with the waves looking so different than yesterday? Yeah, when I first piled out, I was actually like pretty stoked because I love Sunset Point. Um, but it kind of changed, I think, in the in the beginning of the heat. And um, I don't know, you know, the first heat is kind of the guinea pigs, I feel like. So you're you're having all the nerves, you don't know what to expect. Um, but yeah, that's my motto, trying to go into a heat with no expectations. I feel like sunset, you have to adapt so quickly. And I know Sally is like an absolute weapon in these types of waves. So um, I was definitely nervous, not gonna lie. <laughs> well, you didn't look nervous out there, especially with just how deep you were getting those turns, how sharp they were looking. How did you want to stand out against somebody like Sally, who like you said, can thrive in these conditions? Yeah, it was really tricky um, out there. It was kind of, I think the judges were looking for just one um, just powerful maneuver in the open face and something that um, sets you sets you apart, I feel like. So I think the, the last wave I got was like a four or something. And um, I mean, not great scores at all, but I, I was lucky to have a, a nice kind of glassy section on that wave. And but yeah, it was hard. <laughs> it was a challenge, but you have made it through. Congratulations to see the next round. Thank you. Whew, sigh of relief. <laughs> you want to say anything to friends and family back home? Yeah. Hola a todos en Costa Rica en, en mi casa. Muchísimas gracias por todo el apoyo. Siento todo el amor y vamos con todo por la próxima. Gracias. 
All right, thank you very much, Brisa and AJ down there on the glass. You know, it's, it's so fun to see the relief of athletes once they're on the glass. <laughs> Especially in a tough one. I mean, she turned the heat in the last minute, like two minutes. But uh, and, and when you have to do that, it's stressful because you're all the way down for the 40 minutes to get that last move and uh, that last opportunity. She got it, turned it. So Feels we're gonna, good. speaking of stressful, we got 6.45 on the clock. Molly Picklum still needs a substantial score for today, and a 4.84 is hard. Uh, you know, we're seeing Stephanie Gilmore in the non-priority heat flying across, bang, nice. right there through the lip. Can she negotiate the white water and hold, hold on. on? That's not complete. Judge I don't think they're going to give her a complete on that one. Probably looking at coral heads, thinking, should I make this? <laughs> yeah. uh, but the pressure is on Molly. Uh, she has priority. She has the time. She's got to search out a wave. Uh, you know, and we're going to see how she handles that pressure, Megan. Yeah, um, that's pressure, but Molly, she rises to pressure. I'm watching her at Pipe last week. You know, she loves it. She loves meeting the score. She's a hunter, you know. And I really, truly think she's a hunter. Watching her, um, she it's like she's out to get you. You know, she wants to match you. I love it. I love the refreshing um, competitive spirit that she brings to the tour. Some fans down on the beach, hanging out with Sally Fitz. You know, Sally just bowed out of the contest, and look at the smiles. It's a constant. I mean, she's stoked. Sally's been on tour for how many years? She loves Hawaii. She loves surfing, just in general. She's never going to lose that stoke. And um, yeah, you know, she's a role model. She's also a global role model to so many female surfers out there. So, you know, you take some good and you take some some bad. Wins and losses. That's what competitive surfing is all about. Interesting. You can see that that Zoe McDougal, the local girl, has moved over there onto that point section and kind of dipped out of looking over at the, the bowl. So that's the hardest she's, part. You're watching Steph just catch wave after wave and get an opportunity after opportunity, and you're just sitting there, right? So that's the part of being patient, like going, okay, do I keep sitting here? <laughs> and it's so hard because you're tempted. You have to go. You, it's smart to go with your competitor. That's just uh, it's kind of a rule of one on one, really. Uh, that a lot of coaches like to work with. Unless you are so confident in your move away, um, it's a risk. Well, AJ's off the glass. Now she's up with our doctor here on site. What's happening, AJ? I am over here at one of the most important spots of the entire event with Dr. Spencer Chang. He and his team at Hawaii Pacific Health are providing the medical support that these athletes need to be their best in the water. So tell us a little bit about your role here at Sunset. Basically, we're here to keep everyone safe and healthy. So if anything happens, then we're going to be there to acutely triage them and take care of them. And you and your team are also at Pipeline, obviously two very different waves, two very different situations you and your team could find yourselves in. What are some of the things you prep for for sunset? Well, sunset's a lot different. So the wave breaks in a little deeper water, so you don't get a lot of reef contact. So, you know, that's the scary thing about Pipe because you can you know, get these gnarly injuries. Over here, maybe we're a little more worried about orthopedic injuries and perhaps contact or board injuries where you hit the board or the board hits you or that kind of thing. So not as worrisome as pipe, but definitely a, a potential for things to happen. And so we have to be on our toes. And we know that you're on your toes, not just for us here at the competition, but you're doing really good work around the entire state. So what else is Hawaii Pacific Health doing for the state of Hawaii? So Hawaii Pacific Health, again, is the biggest health organization in Hawaii. And so we have four main hospitals, um, multiple specialties and primary care physicians. So the whole gamut, we can take care of anything. And so I think if you're going to get any good care, come and see us for sure. You heard that. So if you're over here on Oahu, Hawaii Pacific Health, where you want to be. Thank you so much for all the work you guys are doing. Awesome. That was awesome. Cool. All right, well, I do know that one of our buddies, Kaipo Guerrero, has seen Dr. Spencer Chang. He fixed both of his knees, and yeah. knee Kaipo's very happy with it, so right. doing good work. And Sunset, um, you can get hurt. I'm My worst injury ever in surfing, competitive surfing, was out here at Sunset one year. I came off a win at um, Haleiwa, and then I was in the semis here, and I went over the falls. Well, I, I kind of landed, fractured my ribs, had to get an ambulance out of here. The power. Just yeah, it crunches you. Crazy. Right. Um, yeah, at deep water, but yeah. hey, you can get hurt. Like, you know, and you know, you're you're walking around 120 pounds wet, so you you're, you're susceptible <laughs> to like smashing the the surface of the ocean. That's you know, what's crazy is think about Nathan Florence and him. You know, as, as what he does. Well, and, and 
so it was just water that broke his spine like craziest thing yep. you, you, you can look on youtube and he has this thing on his channel where he talks about his injury there and he literally was in the water just got and fell and whack and then he break his back and this guy is somebody who trains harder than any athlete i know i mean he's super gnarly weightlifting i mean the point is is mother her. nature will always win and she is throwing big blows all the time at you molly picklin looking for the score 145 on the clock sweeps back into the corner another one she needs some vertical face she wants this wave to stand up so she can hit that lip line in the consequential section and she does that was a great turn right there and out behind her it looked like her opponent was getting a lip line turn of her own she but molly is not done she's going to make the connection to the inside here at vows and she's going to look for oh she's going to go back and go left and she gets some no, another turn off she does do a little one the wave kind of lays down 110 on the clock that's going to be her last effort she's looking for a 484 out of that local girl zoe mcdougal flowing through a couple turns of her own this is going to be fun to watch look at this wave as it stands up she's surfing so well out here really a great flow out of zoe she's up against stephanie gilmore in the non-priority heat and then stephanie gilmore behind on a beautiful wall can she get out in front of it a little bit deep and then that one's going to lay down wow that was a flurry of action right there and the score we're waiting for scores what do you guys think on molly i, I think they're going to be doing some replays <laughs> Mo molly probably got the number I, I, close to it yeah um, you know, all the work, all the inside, it would have been nice if she had gotten another vertical hit, like on that inside section to really sell it. But right now, it feels like it's right on the cusp. But even Isabella had a 4 3, three but you saw on the backs, you know, the turn she did on that one big move on the outside section. Yeah, that was that solid. That might have improved things, too. So, yeah, both these scores are, are probably going to factor in. Really was close it? once again, right at the end of the heat. Yeah, you're right, Pete. They, Both of those scores at the end of the heat, they're going to have to you know, reevaluate and look at them and compare them with the other waves because I'm with you. Molly's last wave was really right there. It just depends on how much emphasis they put on that in between maneuvers. Yeah. You know, There's the replay, down. guys. Well, the outside work you see is flatter, but she has nice flow. And it, it, like I mentioned in the middle of it, like, throughout there, it needs to go vertical again. And it did. And she got the opportunity. So that's why I felt like, oh, she's right there. And then the connection, I was like, oh, she's going to fully sell it. That's the money sh um, turn right there, that second one, Pete. Uh, but this is the only part here where I'm spending a lot of time. That's this right. this yeah. is going to be the tough part. Not a lot of points. And in here, um, going left at Vows. I don't think. The number's coming in pretty darn good. They liked it. Here we go. This is the slow-mo of the, the meaty section, Pete. Straight up. We saw that on our first wave for the 5.0. Again, releasing the fins. It's enough. It's going to turn it, but there still is that one closeout move for Isabella Nichols. But by the looks of this score here, I feel like it's probably done and dusted. I think Molly's into it. I, I'm, I'm yeah. calling this thing's put away. Here's the turn out the back for Isabella. She needs the 5 6 1. I don't think that's the 5 6 1. It's pretty cool. But, I mean, comparison still with single maneuvers in this heat already. Yeah, and comparative to Molly's actual turn, it was a good turn, but I don't know if it was as critical as Molly's turn. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be it. I think uh, Isabella's lip line was was there, but she didn't go straight up and vertical snap. But she went with it and kind of landed out on, you know, as a floater maneuver, which I do not think that, that she's going to come in with the score. But they're waiting for it, and we're going to stand by as it's going to get decided in the water, just like the, the last tee on the beach. Yeah. Here comes Isabella's wave again. It's one big move, and you know, um, yeah, I think that just seeing it again feels like. Oh, okay. Well, this is the 5.5 .5 from earlier. Which one was? That's the last one. Hmm. Yeah. This is the 5.5 .5 right here. So they're going to do the comparisons, and I don't think we're going to come away with a, a bigger number. She's going to paddle in. All the athletes are coming in from that last that last heat with Isabella and Molly Picklum trying to hit the beach, but numbers are, are dropping. Oh. 
5.3. Close enough. Wow. Really? That was, that was, oh, that's right a tough end. number to hear right there for Isabella Nichols, let me tell you. Molly Picklin coming away with it. Big win right there. Isabella Nichols falling out of the draw. Kaipo, Laura, and Jesse will be right back here at the Hurley Pro Sunset Beach. The official press conference for the 2022 Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach. Two-time world champ, Tyler Wright. Uh, so many great memories watching you surf here on the bowl on some big finals days over the years. Talk about your energy that you put into winning this event. I've never won here, but I, I don't know. I'd love that. <laughs> um, you know, it's been a, an interesting few years, but this has definitely been the first event that I've felt comfortable and, and almost surfing like myself again, which is kind of nice. <laughs> I feel good. This is the first year where I feel like I've been able to focus a lot more of my energy on surfing. Is it more about the surfing for you now, not competition? Uh, no, I'm, I'm competitive as they get. It's crazy that we've never seen one of the rats win bells. Winning bells would be amazing. I've been going to bells since I was eight or nine. Numerous adventures through those younger years. So bells is really special. Make or break debuts on Apple TV Plus today. The first four episodes of Season two, check them out. And we see Zoe McDougal on a quick wave right there in her challenge against Stephanie Gilmore here day four of the Hurley Pro Sunset. I'm Kaipo along with Laura Enever and Jesse Mendez. Uh, Laura, we have saw, saw some tight heats, just that last heat between Molly Picklam and Isabella Nichols. Yeah, that was down to the wire. Both of them going for blow, blow for blow, you know, similar scores, but, you know, uh, Sorry, Bella just coming in at the end, in under at the end. Jesse, your coach hat on right now. What is a strategy out 40 minutes uh, with these overlapping heats for the women? Definitely a tough day to compete. Not many opportunities. The waves are quite smaller than yesterday, and um, you expect sense that should be bombing in a lot of opportunities, even more than you need sometimes. And um, Today, the conditions, mostly in the first half of your heat, you're really going to have to scrap and hunt on the lineup and trying to find um, at least something on the first 20 minutes. Yeah, so a quick start, and we'll see if Tyler Wright or Macy Callahan gets to that quick start. Their heat is on in the non-priority portion. 33 minutes on the clock for Wright and Callahan. 13 minutes on the clock for Zoe McDougal, who currently is uh, over the eight-time world champ, Steph Gilmore. Zoe McDougal, you know, grew up here at Sunset Beach. She's got that local knowledge, Laura. And, and so far, it has paid off for her. This happened during the break, though. This is um, Tyler Wright on her first wave. Yeah, nice quick start from Tyler there, but not a lot of opportunity. Macy, on the other hand, getting started behind her. A nice carving turn. Looks like these girls are positioned way up the point. You can see the gurgle of the reef right there and that little backwash. Stephanie also took off on this wave, way up the point. But a nice hit off the top there. Slices it around and looking for a closeout turn and she gets it, a nice pushing, lots of spray there. 
So we're waiting for scores for all four surfers to set the situation in each of the heats. You look at Steph Gilmore, she's got nine waves already. So she's just been rolling the dice, but that last wave was, was her best, Piper. Yeah, coming, coming in at a 4.57. She has reduced her need between Zoe McDougal, uh, but still trailing at the 11 minute 45 mark. Uh, what kind of wave do you think Steph Gilmore needs to turn this heat, Jesse? Um, I think she has two options, obviously trying to find that diamond in the rough out there, which will be that mid, uh, mid set coming and really hugging the bank pretty nicely, or do it what um, I think Molly did it and Bella did it, getting one big turn in a closeout wave, which that's, that keeps it simple, you know, you don't need much of an opportunity, you just need a steep section and hit it hard. Yeah, and you know how much the judges love, you know, those big critical turns where you can airdrop out of the lip and, you know, just make it, it brings that excitement when you have that explosion and they can come out of it. So, you know, you look at Zoe McDougal, her best wave, as we say, Steph taking off. Here we go, talk about one big turn. There's one big turn for you with Steph Gilmore, little tapered shoulder, but nice out the back and exactly what you prescribed, gang, came through. We'll see if that's the 3.61. I'm going to go to Jesse Mendez first. Actually, I'm going to go to Zoe McDougal right now, trying to answer back. A little caught up on that first turn. She may get an inside opportunity here on the double up. Had to kind of ease through that second turn as well. Does a good job of staying on board with that foam climb. This one it looks like it will be connecting to the inside for McDougal. Needs to hop over that curb gets over it. Just S turning. Board a little hung up there, but able to S turn in to the Shorey area. And multiple turns for Zoe McDougal, but the contrast is going to be the one big turn from Steph Gilmore or the multiple turns to the beach, Jesse, of Zoe McDougal. Yeah, that's a tough call. It's um, the polar opposites, right? Like, I think Steph really jammed that first section and made the most of it on that wave and on the other hand i think zoe had a better quality wave gave her more opportunity and i felt like the second turn she lacked a little bit just mistimed a bit and that could have been the money um the money turn and i think it was a little miss opportunity there for her but steph here just speed and power and just grace just looking amazing out there unfortunately the wave died out but that's what kind of happens in those conditions out here at sunset what Slow mo here, Laura. Yeah, love that. You know, just classic Steph. Look at her style there, kinking in that knee and uh, just really trying to make the most of that section. But uh, what I'm loving from Steph right now is the opportunity that she's giving herself. You know, she's rolling the dice as we see Zoe here. This was her wave, like you said, Jesse, and better wave had more opportunity on it. She got this second, you know, big section here to hit, but just kind of mistimed it there. So I think she might get penalized for that. Yeah, I agree with you, Laura. I think um, that was a good chance she had right there to really capitalize on that yeah. wave. And But it's still going to be, uh, it still is a well-surfed wave, you know? Like, I, Stephanie going into this hit against Zoe was really nervous. You know, Zoe knows the lineup so much. She's got the most knowledge out here. Uh, you know, her and Luana and, and the local girls that have surfed here. But Zoe absolutely loves this wave. and. We even saw that at the start of the heat. She decided to sit on the bowl, the first woman this morning, to actually take the risk and sit there, and that was her best score, a 4.67. We're still waiting for those numbers to come through to give you an update in the matchup between Zoe McDougal and Steph Gilmore. Gilmore, like you said, was a little bit nervous. She got a little bit of extra pep. I saw her down some Red Bull <laughs> in the Red Bull athlete zone before her heat. That is a rare sight. I don't know if she finished the whole camp, but she definitely did, did a couple of swigs for some extra energy. Here we go, Steph Gilmore, beautiful carve, as always, off the bottom, off the top, aggressive second turn. Nice rail work for Gilmore, and she kicks out. So getting into her groove right now, Macy Callan. Macy, lip line, glide, throws it up, and unable to ride out of that for the completion. Yeah, that was a missed opportunity from Macy there. You know, I've put her down as being really dangerous in this event. She's, you know, really solid when it comes to, you know, big right-handers with, the, you know, a lot of push to them. And, you know, obviously today isn't as big as it has been, but, uh, you know, she's usually pretty amazing at staying on her feet. So 
But yeah. Steph, <laughs> love that she, uh, you know, we look at her scoreline here. She's just rolled the dice so many times. And her ninth wave, four, five, seven, and I would say that her tenth wave now is, is going to be in her top two. Yeah, I want to say that, that the judges owe us two scores for Steph Gilmore. The score did come in through for Zoe McDougall at a 4.07. This was the last effort, Jesse. Yeah, just amazing timing and so much speech she's carrying. It's so hard to do that out of Sunset Point and just three very good quality turns. I think that's, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the best um, wave of the heat. And Macy, on the other hand, was going to get a very solid score with this big critical finish right here. And she had it. She landed and just lost it a little bit in the end. And yeah, that's going to cost a lot because starting the heat that way would have been very nice for Macy. She had it, and then that little bit of extra whitewash just pushed and fucked her off there. Almost felt like she thought she already had yeah. landed, and then that little bubble came and just took her down, which is important. Gilmore continues to surf, staying busy. This is going to be her 12th wave ridden in this heat. Wave number 11 is going to be an important score for Steph Gilmore. She needs a 4.18. As we're waiting uh, for those scores, let's catch up with the last heat winner, Molly Picklum and AJ. Cool. Molly, you come out of the water, and the first thing you say to me is that was sketch because it was so down to the wire. What's going through your head as that heat was ending? Yeah, I feel like towards the end, I actually saw lumps coming, so I was like, just give me one opportunity and um, let me surf because I feel like I want to lose surfing, at least like having an opportunity. And um, yeah, I was stoked to have had the opportunity and then um, to have converted is pretty cool because. I don't know, sometimes that's the trickier moments in heats when you're under pressure and got to make a score. And um, yeah, you remember those ones. And this one is one where you did take advantage of everything that the waves were giving you. So what were you seeing that you could take advantage of? Yeah, I felt like out there, it's kind of, there's two sections to the point and um, you've just got to get the one that wraps in around the point. Um, it's really tricky though, and it was kind of slow and um, I didn't capitalize on a couple of waves. So. Um, hopefully I see more of what's in those waves when next heat, but um, yeah, I feel like there's definitely waves out there to win. And that's exciting. We'll see you on in the next round. Thank you. Yeah, Molly Picklum, she's going to be set up against Risa Hennessy in quarterfinal number one. During that interview, we were waiting for that score for wave number 11 for Steph Gilmore. She got it. She did what she needed to do. There you go, a 6-7, six, six, and Gilmore takes the lead off of Zoe McDougal. McDougal now, the wild card, needing a 6.58 to turn the heat. Four minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Jesse, uh, Steph Gilmore with that great flow, great style, um, and a combination of maneuvers did what she needed to do. Yeah, I mean, you can't get much out of more out of that wave. Like, that was like A plus surfing and a good quality wave for today. Three back to back turns, and that was rewarded, yeah. Yeah, you know, you're you're good friends with Steph Gilmore, Laura. What, what, do you, what was her mindset coming into this heat, you know, in these tricky conditions? Well, we, we can't forget as well that Steph bowed out in the elimination round yeah. of pipelines. So, you know, she's had a lot of time since that heat to really stir and, you know, the anticipation. And she was stoked to get the heat win, you know, round one. She's been surfing, you know, she's been staying right behind Sunset up here. She can walk down. And, and surf out here. She's been surfing out here every day. So, you know, rain, hail, shine, onshore, offshore, everything. So she's been putting in the time. And I think that's what's giving her the confidence right now. Uh, but yeah, she she obviously knew that Zoe would be really tough to beat just with her knowledge as well. We know she's riding uh, Darren Hanley Designs DHDs. Any idea of, of what she's on today? She bought about four or five boards down to the beach today. I think she's on a 6-1. All right. Six one or six two, and it's, a, it's her uh, number eight model that she's uh, bringing out with Darren. They've been working on that. I'm sure it's got some sort of replica of her cash cow that she won lots of money on, <laughs> and lots of events. But um, yeah, she's been she's been relaxed. The tale of the cash cow. It's a uh, board <laughs> that Darren Hanley uh, made made for Steph Gilmore, and Gilmore just. Uh, on all kinds of heats and events on that cash cow. This is the 6.67, Jesse. Yeah, beautiful surf. And I think the flow really um, took her to advantage in this wave because made her get that very critical second turn right there. And she still kept the speed for a nice wrap to finish. 
wasn't the biggest wave either. You know, we, we've seen bigger waves like Macy's wave behind. You know, probably had more opportunity than Steph's, but Steph really just made it happen and just showed why she's the goat on that one. Yeah, I mean, she's just her flow is just keeping those rails clean. You don't really see a lot of catching involved in Steph Gilmore's surfing. Rarely do you see a, a, a rail catch, even in difficult, you know, kind of warbly conditions like this, Jesse. And that's what she's known for. She's so technical. Like, she's probably, she might be the most technical surfer in the world, combining men's and women's. It's just flawless. Yeah. Like, she's graceful and Unbelievable. <laughs> doesn't do anything wrong. Like, it's, everything's placed on the right spot. It's like sometimes she would get, you know, penalized for looking like she's not trying hard yeah. enough and that was her thing she everyone would always talk about Steph's style Steph's style it's unmatched but then you know she, there was a few years ago where you know in the make or break episode she talks yeah. about being oh, I want to be like more aggressive I want the judges to see my flair and I know she's worked on with her coach Tommy Witts you know throwing her arms more and like really digging in and accentuating her turns so it's paying off yeah I call it the Parco syndrome where you make <laughs> it look too easy and because of that, you know, sometimes, you know, you don't get that struggle. Uh, Macy Callan just put one bang off there. Zoe McDougal, she's up and riding. And this is going to be probably her final chance. Big trip to the lip and a snap for McDougal. So gets the outside turn. And right behind her, Steph Gilmore on the answer back, trying to make an insurance policy in this heat by getting a nice wave, Gilmore. You can see in the background with a great wall up in front of her, probably of the better of the two waves, and the eight-time world champ finishes it off, slashes, and Harry's happy too. Yeah, Uncle Harry happy. <laughs> <laughs> Steph's partner there, he's been surfing with her every day, you know, going hate drills, snakes her, you know, really makes her <laughs> battle for her waves. Do you do that with, with Tati? Yeah, she probably a little more serious, <laughs> though, yeah. <laughs> but it's um, good to mention that you mentioned Harry. I think he loves this wave so much. Yeah. And this is probably one of the waves that Steph didn't <laughs> yeah. have the most pleasure on, and he's probably pushing her to, like, spend yeah. more time in, and it's paying off because she's ripping. Yeah, he, and Harry's a, he's a classic guy. I mean, you could base the reality show just on, on <laughs> Harry and Steph, I think. You can, you can Pitch that it. idea. Great <laughs> surfer, too. <he laughs> right. All right, well. Looks like all the numbers are in, and it's going to be Steph Gilmore on to the quarterfinals. Zoe McDougal bowing out. We're taking a break. We'll be back with more from the Hurley Pro Sunset Beach after this. good at pushing each other over the edge. Look at Tyler, the amount of times like, come on, stop crying, get where it's big, it's time to go. When you're just kids, you just look up to your older siblings so much. We are the most competitive family in the world. When I was 18, I was trying to make the tour and she'd already won a world tour event at 14. All my mates were kind of giving me like, oh, your young sisters outperform you. She finished higher than you. So I feel like I've been chasing her my whole life. Apple TV Plus today debuts season two of Make or Break. Go check that out as we check out Macy Callan now in the priority portion of her challenge against Tyler Wright. Macy. A little bit of a struggle on that wave right behind her is right. 
Tyler glides through that section, lip line glide. Double pump through there. Can't find the open face at the moment. Just gonna try to stick with it. And maybe she will search the double up on the inside, which she does. Just nice rail work. A couple of figure eights there for the two-time world champ as she kicks off. We got a new challenge in the water right now. The yellow leader's jersey is out there in the lineup with Carissa Moore. Carissa won the challenge against a young Luana Silva, just 18 years old, Luana at North Shore. Local, representing Brazil, is got a big challenge against her because uh, she's surfing against her childhood idol in the way of Carissa Moore, Laura. Yeah, she is, and you know, surreal moments. Luana was on the tour last year, and you know, she did amazing at this event. You know, she put up some incredible surfing, and you know, unfortunately lost her with the mid-year cut and she didn't convert on the challenger series and make it back on the tour but i'm so so stoked to see her back in this event and i think she's going to be really dangerous yeah i mean beware of the underdog luana silva making the quarters last year uh going down to gabby bryan in that quarter so she's already got a, a good feeling of making heats out here and uh, what's going to be you know the danger for carissa moore Jesse, when we talk about coming up against a teenager like Luana Silva. Um, obviously, um, she has less pressure to Carissa right now because she's not on tour. And she knows this wave very well. She grew up right here, probably three blocks away from here, surfed this wave her whole life. And I think what's going to be very important for Luana is just apply pressure on, on Carissa. And that's what she's doing. She's starting to heat um, deeper than Carissa and really showing that even though she's her idol, Growing up, she's still going to give her best and put in a fight. That's such a good point. You know, every kid that's grown up here at Sunset, they know every single part of the reef. They probably just, you know, they've started at Vales Reef. They probably swam out here their whole life, and they've moved up to the point on the small days, and then when it gets bigger, they move over to the bowl. So, you know, Luana would have surfed this wave so, so many times throughout her young life already. Yeah, and that's a great point, too. Um, to mention because like there's almost like a little step yeah, that you yeah. gotta take you start in vows and then you get a little order you go to sense of point and then after you go to the bowl and yeah that's interesting and she's it's gonna play off right now for her at the at the point steph gilmore signing some signatures on the beach eight time world champ uh, into the quarterfinals and a nice rebound so far for Steph Gilmore in this second stop of the championship tour. Um, but to your guys' point, when we're talking about local knowledge and you know, knowing this reef, um, I think that's going to be a valuable asset today, Laura, because of how tricky it is. We're looking yeah. at the lineup right now, just even where to sit, where to take off, where to position yourself, looks difficult. Yeah, you know, it, it reminds me of Rincon uh, at Bells. You know, on Bells, you have that mid size, the mid size swell, and you know, the bowl's working, but then it kind of stops. And then you've got the uh, you've got Rincon, which is the point here. And, you know, you really have to be aware of where you're sitting in your lineups and, you know, any little boil and just anything to really work out exactly where you're going to be when those sets do come through. Yeah, Macy Callan currently with a, with a slight advantage over Tyler Wright in their matchup. Wright needing a three-point ride uh, to take lead off of Macy Callahan, Tyler Wright, uh, she's got number 23 on her jersey. She started off with number 13, and that represented 2013 where Tyler said, you know, that's when things were starting to come together for me um, as a surfer. 10 years later, she switched her number to 23 to really reflect a different stage in her life. She's been through so much. Uh, Jesse, uh, you know, in her surf career and the highs and the lows. Uh, so she did that number switch. Yeah, um, I guess I didn't know about that that she switched the number, but it's definitely um, playing to her personality. I guess she's very strong and she doesn't mind switching it up and adapting. And this is another adaptation that she's doing in her career. Yeah, yeah. like year after year, we see Tyler return and it's, it's like the constant evolution of Tyler Wright. And, you know, we've seen her grow up and be competing in these world tour events since, since she was 14, since she was 13. She's just, she's been doing this and competing since she was seven years old, eight years old. So, you know, 
she's had to grow up and become a woman like most most people until most kids that qualify at a young age and they're just trying to work themselves out and you know just who they are without surfing so i love that tyler's just like you know here i am 23 let's go let's go there's a shot of tyler's shaper john Pizel, and tyler's partner with uh you know eyes on the lineup they got the wsl app going right there on the phone checking in checking on scores checking on times uh <laughs> that is a conversation in itself jesse i mean you know uh, and when you're in the support uh, support squad having that WSL app on your phone is a pretty good tool. Obviously, mostly, sometimes you're not here and depending where you're on the beach. So yeah, we definitely got to tune in and there's always someone by me with the scores pulled up. I can't really <laughs> pull up myself because I'm usually like kind of too stressed, but yeah, <laughs> there's always someone helping me out there. Uh, there was a busy go in the lineup, 13 waves ridden to a spot in the quarterfinal AJs with Steph Gilmore. That's right, Kaipo just mentioned it, but 13 waves ridden, Steph. You got busy at the beginning of that heat. Your best waves, though, your 11th and your 13th. How did you settle in to what you wanted to do in the, your heat? Um, yeah, I just, from watching on the beach, you look at a wave and go, that's so small. And then when you're out there, you're like, oh, I should probably go this wave. So my strategy was just to surf as much as I could and see what the judges were kind of, you know, where they'd go, how far that, how high they'd go on like a really small wave. And yeah, I was just basically trying to gauge a scale there. And um, and then in the end there, I was like, okay, I need to chill out and you've got priorities. So just sit and wait for something decent. And um, I was lucky that both Zoe and, Zoe and I had a couple of opportunities on some nicer size sets. And as good as, you know, I actually watched Zoe grow up, like coming here to Hawaii every year. I remember her as a little kid and um, you know, stayed in places with her mom and stuff. So really cool to, to surf against her and she's an incredible surfer. So this is a home break. So I knew she'd be a tough opponent, but yeah, did my best. That familiarity with your opponent, both from a competitive and personal level, how does that play into the heat? Yeah, you know, it's, I feel like once the hooter goes, you just game on, you know, there's, there's no friends out there, but, um, but I've been in that position before where you're a wild card and you're at your home break and it's a dangerous position to be in because you uh, you know the break well, and I'm sure Zoe surfed it just like this more times than than not. So um, yeah, I just I kind of try to keep my distance from her in the water and just play my own game. But I knew that if the good ones were going to come, she'd be on them. So I'd, I was just going to have to stay busy. So yeah, it worked out. It did work out. Congratulations! You're on to the next round. Thanks so much. All right, so during that interview, we saw the first exchange between Luana Silva in the white jersey and the, the yellow jersey on Carissa Moore. So that's going to set the pace for their matchup with 29 minutes and some change on the clock between the two. This heat with Tyler Wright and Macy Callahan is really tight. You know, none of them breaking into the four point range yet. You know, Macy will be looking back at that missed opportunity and that two-turn wave that she had the 367 on, her highest score. That would have been into the good range. And that closeout turn, Laura, yeah. it was her best turn of the wave. So totally. that would have been a great score for yeah. her. And that would have been up in the six Seeing range. with Priority, yeah. eight minutes left. It would have been great for her to have that score with her. Yeah, still waiting for the numbers on this, the opening exchange between Luana Silva and Carissa Moore. We're starting with Silva here. Yeah, I love that first turn, the way she kicks the tail and, you know, just slashing that one there. You know, smaller wave, but must feel good to get started. She's looking spicy and in the rhythm and flow. Carissa Moore on the replay, Jesse. Yeah, I think there's similar waves. Obviously, Carissa with a little bit more power, more water um, displacement and just kind of the wave died out. Nothing much they could have done more in both of these waves, and I think they're going to be kind of similar scores, but they're getting the groove on, putting the feet on the wax, which is something important for surfers. And an uh, interesting point that Steph made in her interview about, you know, gauging, like, you know, not really knowing how big the waves are, like, from, from the beach, you're so far out there, and so, you know, Steph didn't get out there for early surf, so, you know, gauging how much of a score she could get on, a, on the smallest wave. It's pretty interesting. 
Yeah, and that's a great point, Laura. Also, I feel, you know, the adaptability for the surfers because we are on the backside of this, this swell. Yeah. So, you know, you sometimes you just got to surf what's in front of you. The opening exchange between Carissa Moore and Luana Silva, early and slight advantage to Carissa Moore. She got a 4.5. Silva opened up with a four-point ride. So, like you said, Jesse, pretty evenly matched in opening exchange between those two. Yeah, similar waves, um, similar turns, just a little bit more power um, towards Carissa, so that's why she got the nod there by 0.5. You can see where the non-priority heat is sitting, you know, they're sitting quite close to each other, but Tyler and Macy further up the point, so, you know, obviously, Carissa and Luana will be catching those small waves, but in that, that instance, they got the highest score out of both of these heats. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, another great observation. They they somehow snuck um, some quality waves, uh, you know, in the context of today, in at the beginning of their non-priority heat. And Jesse, you talked about it. You know, getting busy early, right, is going to equal success. Both of those surfers taking a page from that book. Totally, because if you look at the scoreboard right now, they both have backups in case it's a very slow heat. They already got that job done, and they only need to get one big score. Obviously, depends how um, you row, but if it's like a heat like the heat before with um, Steph that she ended up getting two good scores, they're going to have to adapt to that, but at least they got that done in the first few minutes with no priority, and now they got to readjust and just play it out the heat. Yeah. Well, Carissa Moore, she won this event in 2009. Uh, she's coming back into Sunset you know, with that yellow leader's jersey on her back. Let's hear from Carissa on her thoughts of coming back to Sunset. Stoked level is definitely really high after the win at Pipe. And uh, I, I haven't won a first event of the season in a really long time. So it feels good to have a, have some confidence and momentum going into the rest of the season. I know it's, it's always a roller coaster through these 10 events. There's ups and downs and everything in between, but to have one in the back pocket feels really good. So coming in here with some momentum, and that's a great start for Carissa Moore. That is such an interesting point because I remember last year when, you know, after Carissa had made three finals and, and you know, came runner-up in all three of them, uh, you know, before Rio finally getting that win, me and her husband and even her coach, Mitch Ross, we were looking through all of her results, and she had, for, like, the last five years, never won a, a, a contest in the first half of the year. She'd always, you know, kind of make finals, but... You know, she'd always turn up the dial in the back end and just really take all of her wins then. So she must be feeling really good to finally get a win at the start of the year. Yeah, you're, you're right. You know, the last time Carissa won at the beginning of the year was way back in 2015 on the Gold Coast. So uh, great point. Great observation, yeah. Laura. Well, she is in the lead, but there's a lot of time to... Uh, to you know, set things up between Carissa Moore and Luana Silva. Carissa Moore, of course, riding Mayhems. And for more on that, I'm going to go to a Hurley board breakdown with Peter Mel. Thanks, Kaipo. And uh, looking at the board rack, it's always nice when you're in the Red Bull Athlete Zone to go dig around and see what's going on. There's two boards in the rack for Carissa Moore. She's probably got two in the water, and I would say they're short boards. This is a 6'2". She has a 6'4". as another board in the rack. So it's Sander Pintail. I just love how Mayhem, Matt Baolis, he always kind of writes the board in little code, you know, there's certain things that are changes, a little subtle changes in design. Poor Chris, I mean, this is the uh, a 6.2, it's 18 and 5.6 by 2.5, 29 liters. It's pretty standard literage for what Chris rides. Definitely probably on a shorter board out here. This is a 6.2 step up in case it was probably 4 to 6 foot, which is more like probably 2 to 4 today. Uh, the the 6.4 has very similar measurements, just a rounded pintail, thruster, no real super differences in these boards. I mean, little kick in the tail, loosening them up probably for this season. But I know there is some subtle changes that are made because they're just so incremental. It's hard to see them in the design. But uh, these are just standard boards that Carissa has been ripping on for many, many years. And those little incremental changes just to make it a little bit better, a little more solid, a little more loose, whatever it is she's looking for. Peter, I got a question for you. Sure. So when it comes to surfboards, Oh, we're going to watch Chris some more. I'm going to have that question for you because Chris is up and you riding. You can come back we'll, to me, Kaipo. We'll get back to you. Thank okay. you. More up and riding. And Carissa caught this one a little bit on the inside, but was able to throw a big snap there. Had an up and down previous to that. Did better on that exchange. That's going to be 
uh, wave number three for Carissa Moore. Yeah, I turned around when she took off on that, and she took off halfway out. So she must have just thought this could double up and have a little section on the inside. Hey, hey, Pete, I'm getting back to you on a board question. Okay, cool. Yep, um, here. When we look at board dimensions, why are the, the, the length and the width and the thickness measured in imperial uh Oh. is imperial measurements and but then the volume is in metric i don't have a, a clear <laughs> answer for that one you just tried to stump me and you have kaipo good job no oh. it's it's just uh you know how surfboard design has been done over the years and uh we're to our own we're rebels as surfers in a way and so we do things different but yeah hey um you got to talk to your shaper about that one. <laughs> okay. just stump hey. professor pete i can't believe it we're gonna we're gonna do more digging i mean it is, it sure. is <laughs> No, Ew, no. This make Pete look stupid. No, this, <laughs> his mic's still open. Yeah. Um, we're going to get back to the heat right now with one minute and 35 seconds on the countdown. Macy Callan ahead of Tyler Wright. So, Macy, uh, you know, it's been a low-scoring affair, Laura, but she's uh, looks like she's got Wright's number at the moment. Tyler Wright needing a 3.01. Here goes Wright in the last 90 seconds. Opens up nicely with a, a carve but then gets a little caught up in there trying to fight to show that that was complete oh was that enough for a three-point ride that is that is really tough i don't know if they're going to say that she rode out of that i mean it took her a long time but i'm just surprised that macy uh, wasn't closer to her with priority luana silva right here in real time so that's going to be silva's second wave uh, a 4.18 will give her the lead on that effort. Down to 45 seconds between Macy Callan and Tyler Wright. Here comes Macy again. A little bank off the top there for Callan. Snapping through that section, a little release. And Macy just kicking out there. So down to 30 seconds and some important scores uh, we need to review for who's gonna get into the quarterfinals between Macy Callan and Tyler Wright, Jesse. Yeah, this, I'm gonna leave this one to the judges. It's very close heat right now and very grindy too. It's so hard to score those ways, but that was a very nice wrap from her. And way to fight it and pull it off the last turn because that was very important. I would say she gets the score, but it's very, very close. And Macy on the other hand, hand unfortunately, started well with a nice um, foam climb, but then the wave just died out, so. I, there's not much scoring opportunity right there for Macy. All right, so still undecided. The clock's off for Heat 4 in the round of 16. Still waiting for two important scores to see who is going to advance out of that matchup. Tyler Wright just taking this one to the beach, as is Macy Callahan. Yeah, the only thing I'm thinking is whether the judges might, you know, not be stoked on how long it took Tyler to ride out of that turn. And, yeah, that's the only way I think that it could be held under the three-point range. That's what's keeping, like, yeah. for sure score totally. and, like, maybe not. Yeah, like, yeah. she took a long time. It's, it's whether they're going to say, yeah, that was a ride out. We'll take a look one more time for this final wave of Tyler Wright. It needs to be a three-point ride. Yeah, it was a bigger turn, and she got really on rail on that first turn there. That was really cool. She did the best she could and just fighting through this whitewash. She's on it and she, she does get through at the end. I mean, I think. It's it's so critical because it almost almost like she looked like she was going to fall twice yeah. or three times and then she regrouped, kept her composure and she knew it was her last shot. She, was, she, she needed to give her best. So they're going to go back to a, you know, 2.17, a 3.8 and just see, you know, is this going to come Obviously higher than the, the two under the three. Super grindy though. Wouldn't have expected you know, Tyler and Macy to be you know, fighting for that three point ride at the end. I don't think they would have been expecting it either. Yeah, both surfers just slowly paddling in. Numbers coming through for Tyler Wright. Couple of judges up and she gets the number. Tyler Wright will go on to the quarterfinals on that final effort. Wow, that is, that's rough for Macy right there. 3-1-3, three, three. she needed a 3.1, so it's gonna feel good for Tyler. We'll be back with more after these messages.
The Hurley Pro Sunset Beach is brought to you by Hurley, official apparel brand, the Hurley Pro Sunset Beach. By Turtle Bay, official resort of the World Surf League. And by 805 Beer, properly chill. My rookie year was very hard. I think it was harder than I even thought it was gonna be. The level of women surfing is insane. And from the moment I surfed my first heat, I was like, wow, these girls are serious. They are not gonna be friendly in heats. Like, it's like game on. After Pipeline last year, I was like, I gotta step it up a notch. I did good at Sunset. After that, we're already like thinking about the cut. All the pressure sitting on the shoulders of Gabriella Bryan at the moment. So at Margaret River, I had to do something amazing. Gabriella Bryan advances through into the finals, and she has officially made the mid-season cut. Looking back at it, I was like, wow, that was intense. So ready for sunset. I want to go further than I did last year. Yeah, I would really love to go further than semis, and that means final and hopefully a win. Catching up with the 2022 Rookie of the Year, Gabriella Bryant, she's in the new heat. Luana Silva up and riding here against Carissa Moore. Silva with a nice snap to begin, and then you can see the wave slowing down. She's sticking with it. Moore right behind her, two wave sets on offer. So we're gonna see these back-to-back -back exchanges over and over again. Carissa Moore, a little bit steeper face on her wave, and a five-time world champ doing a good job of swinging that mayhem surfboard through its paces, right on the heels of Luana Silva with that cut back. So we'll be waiting for those scores. For Carissa Moore and Luana Silva, Lakey Peterson, quick to draw here. A couple of snaps there, way up on the reef on the point. Lakey is set up against Gabriella Bryan in heat six of this round of 16. What do you think about this matchup? This is an exciting one. You know, Lakey ranked number three, Gabby number five. You know, both of them have had solid results out here at Sunset. And, you know, both powerful natural footers that really love right-hand points and rights, you know. So Gabby got second at Margie's last year. She always comes to light in, you know, heavy water waves. Obviously, say not that heavy, but, you know, Lakey will look back to her performance, you know, at El Salvador, and she was shredding over there last year, and I think she's Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lakey Peterson getting a ninth last year here at Sunset, went down to Bailey Sakura Johnson, and Gabriella Bryant, semifinals here last year, going down to Malia Manuel. Tyler Wright uh, just, you know, had a clutch performance in the final minute out there. Let's hear from Tyler. Tyler, you needed a 3.01 on your last wave. You got a 3.13. What were you thinking as you were taking off for that final wave? Um, that I needed a 303 <laughs> or whatever it was. A, a um, six, three. Yeah, obviously that heat wasn't ideal. Um, I think I made a lot of mistakes and place, mostly just not more, catching waves, um, <laughs> which is kind of hard because in the heat before there was so many waves in our front half, 20 minutes. So I was like, okay, cool. like. Once that rolled over, yeah, I missed a few opportunities, but I was like, okay, once we get priority, I'll be able to roll the dice a few times. And honestly, that just didn't happen. I sat there for 15 minutes needing a 301 or whatever it was. 
and yeah, got it in the last minute. On, I think it on the one minute and thirty line. So, like, you can't do much about that. But I definitely feel like I I didn't surf. I didn't, just didn't take off on waves, which is. Um, <laughs> 90 percent of what you do out there. So um, no, I'll go have a look and debrief and um, really kind of settle down again. And that's obviously not. I'm a bit slow in the morning, but yeah. So it's kind of one of those ones. So. Yeah. Even if it wasn't your best, you are on to the next round. It was enough to get you there, knowing that you don't feel like you were at your best. You don't feel like you surfed your best. Does that give you confidence into the next round that once you dial in a few things, you'll be able to surf a heat that you feel a little bit is more representative of who you are? Yeah, for sure. Like I think you have those heats, and I think you have to concede some of those moments where you know, like you're not going to be at your best every single day, um, and you're going to have moments like that. Um, all I can do is pick up what I learn, um, pick up what the ocean really told me. I didn't surf early this morning, I've been a bit tired, so I've kind of just, I didn't go out and I didn't feel the ocean and it's definitely, um, I definitely felt that in that heat. And even though it was the right thing for me to do this morning is not to go out, but definitely it's hard to turn it around um, in that heat and, and really fire up, fire up the jets. So, you know, looking at that, taking all of it to the next round, um, yeah, I, I think it's, you know, felt the ocean, the board on my feet felt good. I haven't served that board since pipe. Um, so everything like that is really good, just I probably wasn't really capitalising on the situations that I had out there. What was the board you were riding? Uh, just a 5.8. Um, it's just my normal board. Look, it's, it's really, the, you can feel the energy is going, which is also kind of a bit worrying when I was just waiting there for 15 minutes going, uh-oh. Um, and so look, like I had an opportunity in the end, but I definitely had opportunities that I didn't capitalise on. Uh, just because I, I didn't want to lose priority at the back half of the first 20 minutes and then a set come through. And there's a few situations like that where I probably just should have just pulled the trigger and just get a four, get a four. Well, we'll look forward to seeing the adjustments in the next round. Thank you so much, appreciate it. All right, during that interview, uh, we had quite a few waves and some scores, so let's get you caught up. Carissa Moore got a 5.83, we're waiting for that number. Luana Silva, 3.63 in that matchup. Carissa Moore with the lead. Luana Silva needing a 6.33. Lakey Peterson opened up with a three-point ride. Gabriella Bryant rode two waves during that interview, and we're waiting for both of those wave scores to update you on that heat, heat number six. Yeah, I love that detailed interview by Tyler. Just, uh, you know, talking about being, you know, a bit slow and tired this morning, and then, you know, sometimes... You can have those mornings where you decide not to free surf and you can get out there and feel like on straight away, but then, you know, there's some mornings where you, you, where you don't feel like free surfing, but that's maybe the time when you should go rinse off and wake up. What do you think, Jesse? Um, yeah, it's, it's a tough one because there's so many days of competition. Yeah. And obviously, like she said, there's going to be days that you're not on your best. And what I think it's super impressive over this year is what I've noticed that the best the best best in the world that they're very good at scrapping heats that they're not on yeah. on top like they would be having a shocker but they still managed to make it a good heat and yeah i think that's what she did right there and most likely she won't have another shocker because she's that good and she would she'll figure it out you know yeah, totally i know it's so as we say a paddle here from carissa gabriella bryant this is going to be her third wave ridden opened up with a 2.7 3.57 a wave number two gabriella just solid here at Sunset, no matter what the size. And I jinxed her with that rail catch just as I was giving her some flowers, Laura. Yeah, that was a... So this happened before the heat was set uh, between Lakey Peterson and Gabriella Bryan. A little bit of jockeying there mm -hmm. in that Oops. open priority, which led to this. This is a three-point ride for Lakey Peterson. I love to see that little jockey for position. These girls obviously showing that they want it. This is the 357 for Gabby Bryant, Jesse. Yeah, not much else she could have done. I really like the first turn from Lakey, like that very tight transition. I think Lakey might have a little bit of an advantage today. She's very fast and lighter in her foot when she needs to be, and yeah. she also has power, so. It's going to be interesting to see the powerhouse and Lakey like on those conditions and Luana up and riding. Up and out with Luana Silva. Lakey Peterson riding a, a Channel Islands. It's a 5'10", 
18 and a half and two and five sixteenths in thickness. Yeah, interesting you say that, Jessie. Lakey just fits in the pocket so well. You know, she can get one of the quicker girls, uh, you know, when she's doing those in, this, in the pocket snaps and just gets off the bottom so quick and, and jams it in the pocket. So I think that, yeah, could be a bit of an advantage on Dale today. I think Gabby can, you know, throw a bunch of spray and do some big power hacks. But, uh, you know, where we see Gabby get, like, a lot of her points and her spark is, like, hitting big end sections. So... I think Gabby, yeah, if you could try find something through one big turn on, she could uh, get most of her points there. Yeah, it's damaged. I remember watching a few heats of her in Margaret River, and she had like a 5-5, five five, and the conditions were great, like for combinations of maneuvers, and she had a 5-5 five five with only one yeah. car. <laughs> so that's when you know like she has an X factor in those power moves. Totally. All right. Well, you know, I asked the question about Pete about measurements on board, di dimensions, you know, Imperial for the length of thickness, and the width, and then in metric for the volume. Peter, what's the answer? Well, I it, I started thinking about it because you did stump <laughs> me. I didn't have a reactionary que you know, answer to you, but I actually now thinking about it, uh, the computers this is a big part of it. Really, it started to think about metric. As soon as we started using um, you know computers to help design these boards, it went to this metric system. I mean, before that, we were using rulers and we were measuring it all that way and so there's kind of a mixed blend of it depending on the shaper but ultimately John Pazell was having a chat with him and now he looks at it as those numbers when he started shaping it was all imperial half inches three eighths five eighths uh, but with uh, nowadays with the computers it's all digital 0.56 metric so that's your answer mostly the computer advents of it is why we're seeing that now kind of be more the numbers we're seeing all right well thank you Peter as we see Carissa Moore uh, finishing up her wave yes that is the answer it's because com computer assisted drafting CAD designs it gives you um, an estimated volume on your board and just mind you the volume with the CAD designs on these computers is an estimate because the only real, the only real way to get a true volume is through water displacement so like if you were like building a how, how many people back home just googled what metric system is <laughs> <laughs> we've been, I didn't. We've been slow to, a, to adapt to that system here in the US uh, you from Australia I mean it makes a lot of sense to me the metric system it's really easy to understand everything's in tens everything's in hundreds you know uh, the I've imperial system is kind of confusing in America my friend my friend Dimity almost got a speeding fine the other day and she tried to blame it on not knowing the difference between miles and kilometers <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, so we did see uh, Carissa Moore up on a, on a wave and let's review this ride Jesse yeah um, Carissa Moore just applying pressure on every turn she does as usual, you know, always pushing so much water and right there going through the flat section very well. Just nothing much in offer on that wave. She did what she could have, but she's just playing the Stephanie Gilmore rule, just catching waves and seeing what the opportunity gives you. Yeah, that was a 4.5 for Carissa Moore. It does not change the situation. She's still in the lead over Luana Silva and Lakey Peterson. Look at Sharp. Like you guys are talking about, you know, the speed and you know, just the the quick radius turns that Lakey's able to throw down on display there. 3.28 will give her the lead over Gabriella Bryant, Laura. Yeah, she just looks so connected to her boards there and they must have that, that nice bit of rocker there so she just fits perfectly in the pocket. It's like as soon as she sees that bit of pocket, she just puts her weight on her back foot and she's straight up into the, the loop there so it's so fast and so fun to watch right here she identifies that little pocket boom just bashes straight up there so quick and it's so hard to find that lift yeah, that little totally. pocket right there it's like look how much wobble there is to the wave now we can see it in slow-mo and the only little spot she had in a fraction of second she made the most of it So coming out of this replay, we still do not have the score for Lakey Peterson. A 3.28 will give her the lead. It's three, uh, 23 minutes in that non-priority heat. Three minutes remaining between Carissa Moore and Luana Silva. Silva with priority. Silva needs a large number, a 6.33. In the context of today, Laura, that needs to be a special wave. Yeah, I mean, it either needs to be a wave that has, you know, the opportunity for her to do, you know, four or five turns on it, or something that maybe a two-turn wave. 6-3-3 is pretty hard to get that on a one-maneuver, one so she's 
She's going to have to look for something with, with two big sections. All eyes on Silva right now. There's the need to advance. And the time on the clock, just 2 minutes and 20 seconds. And what are we seeing out there, Jesse? Tough spot for Luana. She has priority. She knows the lineup very well, but time is going against her. And a 6 3 3 today is not an easy task. Yeah, I, I concur. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big number, so she's going to need one of the larger waves of the day. So this is when the X factor comes in on the playing field, Laura. It really is up to Sunset Beach now for Luana Silva. Yeah, she's just going to be willing any sort of set to come her way. Hopefully she just gets the opportunity for, you know, a bigger sort of wave that we've seen because that will be an X factor as well if she can get something bigger. And the only other thing she could probably do is try to do something really progressive. This is true. I mean, or reverse, anything like that. Yeah, that's that's a great point because we do have a little bit of a sea breeze going on right now. So that helps for people that are trying to get above the lead. You really don't want those light offshores because they kind of throw your board away from your foot. So that's another point that she could take advantage of it. And maybe if a nice closeout section comes, she can go big and do one of those. Yeah, she can get in there. You know, Luana Silva, just a teenager, 18 years old. So she's really of that you know, new generation of women professional surfers who do have some of that air game in it have, and have developed it. So maybe this is time for fireworks, but gosh, she just needs a wave for us, Laura. Yeah, I mean, I've been so impressed by how Luana's been improving in surfing. You know, every year I come back and she's just got, she's getting taller than me and by the minute and now she's towering over me, but <laughs> she's just so powerful and fun to watch and has this spark and like, I love the way she kicks her tail out and uh, she's had some amazing highlights. If you go on her Instagram, she's dropped some cool clips of her surfing in Mexico and she just throws so much spray. Well, down to 25 seconds and uh, it's looking, I mean, we can see the color of the sea is dark right now. And so are the chances for Luana Silva because we're 10 seconds away from a horn. And that's going to be it. So, Silva out of competition. Carissa Moore on to the quarterfinals. More action coming here. Tatiana Westenweb, Caitlin Simmers in the water when we return. Tati, she's fiery. She's gutsy. Uh, I would say she's probably the gutsiest woman surfer on tour. She's not really intimidated. She's going to not back down to someone like Moana. It's on. We've got a big heat entering the lineup. Tatiana West Webb and Moana Jones Wong. So cool to see this wild card in the event. Moana knows the lineup so well. She's one of the women that has really dedicated herself to Pipeline and learning all the intricacies. It's a gnarly heat. It's a big heat for Tachi. Moana serves Pipe more than anyone ever. I really got to just focus on myself. The first four episodes of Make or Break, the next season out today. Tatiana Weston-Webb up and in the water. Nice 
Hit off the top of the lip there. Her heat just starting against Caitlin Simmers in this round of 16, heat number seven here at the 2023 Hurley Pro Sunset Beach. AJ McCord alongside Peter Mel, Brett Morning. Simpson in the water. How are you guys doing? Morning, guys. Good. I got another cup of coffee. I'm excited. <laughs> and you got some damp hair. It looks like you were in the water. I did. I was able to paddle out with Zoe. I caddied for her. And uh, she put up a good fight versus Steph, but Steph kind of slowly kept building and uh, got her at the end. But, well, that, that eight-time world champ, she tends to do that kind of stuff. But it was cool. I got a chance to talk to her afterwards. She talked about that relationship that she has with Zoe and that just sort of moment of getting a chance to see someone that she's grown up, see, watch someone she's seen grow up compete against her here at Sunset. Well, yeah. Especially when she gets the win. <laughs> it's a little, like, it's but, always you know, a little easier. Yeah, yes. and it, 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 she took some work to get there. Yes, it did. Tatiana Weston Webb putting in work as we speak. Nice snap off the lip here looking to see if this way is going to bring her anything else another turn staying busy out there which we've seen a few of the competitors take that attack today just because the, the consistency is a little bit a little bit variable during the break we saw gabriella bryan nice swooping carve there to start on this wave another one going back into the whitewash she's going up against lakey peterson in the heat with priority currently in the lead, trying to build on it with this wave here, connecting it all the way to the inside to see if it'll stand back up, and it does not. But Gabby Bryan in the lead over Lakey Peterson. Lakey needing a 3.53 to move into that first place spot against Gabriella Bryan. She does have priority out the back in 15 minutes, 15 and a half minutes, we'll call it, left to go. Speaking of Lakey, she's getting in on the action right now. Moving down the face, trying to find something off the lip, but cannot. And Pete, I feel like that's something we have seen in this first few heats of the women, the first six heats or so of the women, is that some of these faces are really standing up and some of them really not. And so yeah. they're trying to take There's off. There's been a little change, a little shift. Yeah. Um, the winds have moved more Kona, which means they've moved more kind of to the south and almost to, to the southwest-ish. And you know, that's why you're seeing those screen, little bumps come across. And it's adding a bump on the face, and it's uh, creating a little bit more of a challenging lineup. This morning early, we had those more east-southeast trades, or, or which was blowing straight offshore, but definitely a shift in the wind. Uh, it's not going to get too strong, I don't think. Fingers crossed. It, anything can happen. It's weather. But uh, that's definitely adding to the, the, the extra challenging conditions. Simpo, you were in the water. What did you feel? Yeah, it actually was a little bit cleaner. It's even picked up a, tear, a hair, but here goes Gabby. It looks like a little more size on this wave. See if she can get a nice first turn. So she gets a nice carve in the pocket and then clicks it right there. And yeah, you got these little ribs up the face. So she's got to stay very vigilant when you're on the wave. You got to keep that board speed up, but you don't want your, you know, rail to sink under too far. And this is, uh, you know, one of the better ones of this heat. She's going to probably go back left. You got Lakey out the back. It's uh, it's challenging because you're looking for those waves that like this that double up through that inside, you know, section, which uh, Lakey gets a nice cut back right there. And then right here, you're like, is my board broken? Because <laughs> it's not moving fast enough to get to that inside. But um, it's it's challenging. But you know what? These girls are cut out for it. This yes. is they're professionals. Certainly. <laughs> certainly seeing a lot of that. I just wanted to touch on Lakey's equipment real quick because she actually had uh, options for two different boards that she was going to choose to go out on this morning. Uh, anywhere from a 6.0. The 6.0 actually has orange rails. This one has blue rails, which is a 5.10. So she's riding kind of more of her normal short board. I mean, it's designed for Hawaii, but the size and the volume, 18 and a half, 2 and 5.16 is probably very similar to a short board she would ride all over on the tour. Those scores starting to drop in here. Here's Gabriella Bryan. I believe this was her 4.03 wave. So, Pete, what do you think about her that first? I think we're waiting on it, actually. Yeah. Uh, oh, we're still yeah, waiting. Yeah, yeah, still waiting on it because this uh, that was a score from previous. So I think she's going to improve um, and <clears throat> already in the lead, but she's going to extend it and it's going to make it a little more challenging. I mean, we're looking at 7.60 points for Gabriella and Lakey, just uh, you know, basically a half point behind. So again, this is what happens in these types of conditions. You get these very close heats and you try to find a way to separate yourself. Also, Lakey picking up the wave again. She's on her short board, so she's trying to get a little more tighter arcs, a little more speed and quickness in the board. Whereas I think Gabriella, you know, her style is going to be a little bit more longer, drawn-out line. So a little contrast in the way that these two surfers will surf. It'll be interesting to see how the judges sort of gauge both of that, right? It's true. Into consideration their difference in equipment and what their styles are trying to put forth. 
Yes. I think what's very important today and from uh, obviously every day, but is that first major maneuver. Like if you have to do a lot of busy work and nothing really gets done and then it's kind of at the end of the wave, the, the score is going to stay down. It's really what you if you can drop in and get straight into it. It seems like they've really enjoyed that. And it makes sense, right? Like you want the biggest maneuver right off the bat. So that'll be an interesting one because Lakey's best turn, I felt, was that that last cutty big round roundhouse. And then Gabby had that first nice carve. So it'll be interesting to see how those scores kind of come through. And I feel like what we saw with Tyler's heat as well is it's also about how you finish, right? How do you fight to the finish and, and make sure you whatever your finishing maneuver is, you stick the landing. Yeah, as well. it's any time you have a vertical moment, really. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and it, sometimes it happens in the beginning, and ultimately that's what you want. But uh, if you get it at the end, that's cool Ooh. too. Tati with a big hit on her opening maneuver. That's exactly what you're talking about. I suppose she got a lot of verticality on her. Yeah, so like, the, obviously you're not getting the length of ride, but you know the criticalness of that maneuver is is what matters most. And I think. Yeah, she's probably going to, you know, uh, most likely at the end of the heat need a longer, more connecting style wave, but. Yeah, get your rhythm. She doesn't have priority right or in there. They're not in the priority heat. So I don't think there's a reason to sit there for too long. Like start surfing, kind of get your feet, um, get loose, kind of. You never know. You might fall into a little double up and connect the dots. And like what we saw with Tyler Wright, she said she started feeling out the ocean a little bit more because she didn't get that free surf in. Gabriella Bryan getting a good feel of the ocean here. Nice beginning maneuver, a little roundhouse to come back into that power source, but the wave just not really kind of fizzling out for her there at the end. So Gabriella Bryan currently in the lead. She's got a 9.53, but Lakey Peterson with priority out the back now with 10 minutes remaining, 10.45 remaining in that priority heat. Tatiana Weston Webb, Katie Simmers also in the water, but on the glass right now, Carissa Moore is standing by with Laura and Yes, Carissa Moore bringing the sunshine with her yellow jersey. Thank you, <laughs> we need it. Uh, that heat, nerve-wracking moments at the end. You know, uh, Lulu only needing a, a 6.33. You're saying that's always just stressful moments. Yeah, I, the conditions out there are just like, it, it's kind of that weird devil size. So it's like in between, there's waves everywhere. And so it's very confusing. <laughs> so I'm just like, like, okay, take sunset, normal sunset out the window and just try to surf what's right in front of me. And I, uh, yeah, Luana, this is kind of her backyard. So I knew I had a really tough matchup against her and getting a 6.3 or whatever she needed is, kind of simple for her so I was nervous is nervous times all the way up until the end and something we actually didn't see on the broadcast during that heat you did quite a big paddle over to your uh, caddy love Hadell to change boards so what did you change yeah so I started off on a 6-2 uh, mayhem shape and then I was like oh I, I did I did it off the lip turn and it just felt like a little too big for the section so I was like okay I'm gonna downsize for the, the second half of the heat and so I was on a 6-0 for the rest of it and that obviously felt a lot better it felt really good. Both boards feel really good. I'm lucky that the 6-2 still turned really well, and even though it was, um, even though it was some small sections. So, yeah. oh, well, amazing. You got the job done, and we'll see you into the quarterfinals. How does that feel? Oh, so stoked. Um, yeah, I don't know if they'll be on today or another day, but I'm really excited and grateful to be into the quarters. Amazing. We'll see you soon, Carissa. Well done by Carissa Moore to move on into the quarterfinals. And that's interesting strategy, right? You always wonder, do I have the time? Should I take the time to switch my equipment? But Carissa making that decision, Simpo, and it seemed like it paid off for her. Yeah, that's interesting. It was funny because I was, when they were paddling out, Love paddles up. He's like, oh, I got the backups of 6'8". He was just messing around. But <laughs> it ended up, it was, it was obviously he was on the 6'0". And I think obviously they identified like conditions are getting smaller. And with that bump, the longer, longer rail line can tend to get caught, you know, when it's tight little pockets. So I think she identified it early enough in the heat, you know, to make that adjustment. Yeah. Where if there's like seven minutes to go, you're like, oh, my gosh, what do I do? It's it's kind of too late. You got to just make do. So um, quick decision paid off. And she's not, I mean, look at the caddies. They're, they're pretty far away. So, I mean, if you're going to make that decision, it's going to be a good minute to probably do that transfer, a minute and a half. For sure. Uh, but, it, again, just it's nice to be able to do it. I believe it's not like, I don't think you love was like going, hey, come over here, change board. You know, like it was a decision made by, by Chris on her own just to go, hey, that felt a little sticky. Let's go to a short board. And that's, that's just the ability of, of having a caddy out at Sunset Beach that allows you to be able to transfer boards super quick. 
And that's such an important decision because she's the one feeling the turns, right? Yeah. And so the caddy can see what you're doing, but she's the one who's feeling it going, I need to go a little shorter. I need a little bit more mobility. Yeah, well, a lot of times when you're way over in the channel, you don't really see a lot what's going on. Like you see the wave and you're hoping they're hitting the lip and, but yeah, you're, you, they're obviously feeling it. So it's a, it's a decision right away where, hey, my board's too big. I want to switch it up now. And, and she did that and it paid off. Katie Simmers taking off on her first wave of the heat. Nice hit against the lip there. A little swooping car back into the whitewash before she bails out of that one. So a little two-turn maneuver for the rookie to get started here. 2003 CT rookie. Yeah, and just you think about, look at the, the number of waves ridden by Tati in her heat. Five waves. Uh, already a, a pretty quick lead on top of Caitlin. Caitlin's sitting around, waiting it out, looking for something a little more special. And she starts off with a 3.07, though. So when you're looking at the rest of the scores, it's a pretty good start. For yeah, Katie I mean, it's, it is. It, it, if you're not wanting to keep threes in your score line, I think in any heat you're ever in. But uh, when you need them and they're necessity, sure enough, yeah. So it's a good backup number. I would say that she's not going to lay on that uh, for the rest of the heat. She's definitely going to need bigger numbers, especially against Tatiana. Yes, especially because we've seen Tatiana get so busy here. Her first two waves, her best one so far, that 3.17 and that 4.0. And it's so interesting. Every single time we have these overlapping heats, obviously Tati and Katie have to wait for priority to pass from Gabby and Lakey. But you see the separation in the two heats and where they're sitting in the lineups. And is there a little bit of a strategy with that knowing that you're not the priority heat? yeah for sure you don't want to you ultimately don't want to paddle too far past them because they could take any wave off you and then you, you do want to surf the heat that against the person that you're against so you don't want to let them just roam away and they get scores and you're kind of like not there especially if you have priority over them so i think the goal is there's a lot of strategy there you know beforehand is um you know, not going too far to where you can't get a wave off the heat in front of you and then also staying with your competitor. So you kind of surf in that same heat, same waves. And it's a strategy in overlapping heats, right? I mean, yes, they get the extra, you know, so it's a little bit different. You know, it's definitely not like if you're just out there with one other surfer and, and strategically there will be changes because of that. I mean, especially when you're surfing the non-priority heat, you got to find waves that you're uh, the other heat's not going to take from you because you don't want to take off and just waste a wave because that's what will happen. You know, if you're too deep, which is in this heat, you can see the priority heat is actually deeper. So there, but we've seen it swapped yeah. too. Earlier today, we saw the the non-priority heat sitting deeper as well. So it's just funny how the heats play out. It, it depends on which surfers are sitting where in the lineup, and it seems like there's two distinct areas that they've been kind of focusing on. For sure. It, here's a here's a good little wave right here. It looks like Tati on the backhand. Kind of a wide one. These ones go a little deep right there. Sometimes the bigger ones allow you to get up and over that and get a big maneuver. And uh, yeah, that one just wasn't able, went into deep water. And we do have an update. We knew that we started this day looking to try and finish the women's round of 16. Laura Enever now standing by with Renato Hickel for an update on what we can expect the rest of the day. Yes, everyone, I've got Renato here. What is the call heading into the afternoon? Well, Laura, uh, swell really fading quick, so we're gonna uh, call the rest of the event off for the day. No quarterfinals today. Women round the 16 hit eight will be the last hit of the day. Uh, wind's not cooperating this morning too. Really tough conditions. And we have two remaining days on a waiting period that look good. It's Sunday and Tuesday. So stay tuned. Those days could be the final day. Or we can split in two as well. Absolutely amazing. We'll see you back here for Sunday or Tuesday. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Laura. So Betty Lou. Sakura Johnson and Caroline Marks going to be that Heat 8, and they will wrap up our action for today, Peter. Yeah, and uh, I mean, we're good. We, it puts us in a good place. It puts us for finals day, really, is what it does. By getting this round done, we now have time to finish it all in one day. Uh, you know, Sunday swell, they're going to say that it's probably going to be on the decline of that first moment, which is, you know, like, you always don't want to kind of, you'd love to finish it on, on an increasing swell, but we're getting what we get, right? So Sunday's an opportunity, depending on how big it is, I think we'll, we could have that be a, a solid day. And then uh, if that you know falls through, we've got Tuesday to look at. There we go. Always nice to have a backup. Lakey Peterson trying to get a 5.31 in these last three minutes of her heat against Gabriella Bryan to move on into the quarterfinals. She lost in this round last year to Betty Lou, Sakura Johnson. So she's trying to do better here than she did last year at sunset and down to just three minutes left in that heat to do it. Tatiana Weston-Webb and Katie Simmers, slowly but surely, working on their own heat. Tatiana Weston-Webb, very, very busy heat, like you pointed out already. 
Katie Simmers, though, one wave, 3.07, and in the mix because those those mid-range scores, ideally not what you want, but um, something that she can certainly build off of. And speaking about Katie, let's learn a little bit more about the 2023 CT rookie. Maybe give me a clap real quick. My name is Caitlin Simmers, and I'm 17, and I'm from Oceanside, California. I usually go by Katie, but I really don't care. Probably my biggest life mentor would be my mom. One of the best things my mom has told me is to always bring a book somewhere and a bathing suit, because you never know when there's going to be a hot tub or a pool somewhere. Or you're always like waiting around, so having a book is better than your phone. My mom's a hero. <laughs> She's pretty sick. My goal is to probably just to make the cut, honestly, <laughs> and try to enjoy it, too. Yeah, I'm just going to see what happens, I guess. Maybe do some roundhouse cutbacks. Maybe get barreled. That would be pretty sick. <laughs> just such a fun addition to this CT this season, you guys. So cool. It really is. I mean, in her surfing ability, what she's able to do on a surfboard is incredible. You know, already a, a great career. Matter of fact, qualifies and just turned it down. Uh, so confident that she knew she was going to be able to qualify. It took that year to really get more settled and, and get older. I mean, she was very young when she was uh, first qualified. So now 17, still very young, um, you know, on to the championship tour. But uh, you know, it's, um, I mean, she could have easily refused her spot again if she wanted to and probably qualified. Lakey Peterson trying to reserve her spot in the quarterfinals. Takes off on that wave, but it lets her down. Just that one first move for Lakey. She needs a 5.31. Probably not going to be the wave that gets it done for her. So she's got 43 seconds, 42 counting down to try and find another wave. And this is not where she wants to be without a doubt, because now Gabby Bryan has priority out the back as well. So she's going to have to do some hunting here on the insides, finds one that she thinks she can do something with this face and quickly realizes she cannot. Yeah, that was that's a bit of a bummer for Lakey right there. That first turn on that last wave was really nice. And then the thing just kind of tailed off into the deeper section. So, um, you know, this is interesting here because this heat's end or the that heat's ending and Katie just hang on to that priority. But Tati's finding a little inside grower right here. Ooh, Tati getting into the lip there on that last section, trying to connect it here. See if there's anything else on the face. There wasn't. But like you were saying, Simpo, some nice, nice work done on the outside by Tatiana Weston Webb. She has quite a few more waves ridden seven to one than Caitlin Simmers. Their heat now takes priority. But in this one, Gabriella Bryan punches her ticket to the quarterfinals, ending Lakey's run here at the Sunset Beach. We'll be right back. to the Hurley Pro Sunset Beach. The Hurley Pro, the Hurley Super Surfer dropping soon here. And I understand, Simpo, you're pretty good at the play-by-play -play well, on this part. I, I'm still early days. I'm learning. <laughs> I, I've even been putting in, a, I've been putting in some time, but I'm still battling my Grom. I it's, mean. It, you could, you know, it's a fun game to like play a little contest with your kids or, or whoever, your friends. You could do some pretty good airs. The goal is kind of get these coins and you know, you could do a Superman. You could do. There's kind of some crazy errors as well. So, I mean, I'm gonna try and it. live vicariously. 
screw it because that's some of the closest I'll ever be to some of these maneuvers. So I'm going to try and live Same. vicariously <laughs> through that. You can download it. Go to Hurley.com to download Super Surfer. It is dropping soon. A lot of fun to see that. Yeah, that's kind of what that was our idea behind it. Just have fun with it. And, uh, you know, that's kind of been our motto. So we were just trying to integrate some other ways to incorporate surfing while everyone plays video games. <laughs> I <laughs> Nailed love it. it. Gabrielle O'Brien coming in, getting some feedback from her coach, but the most important thing, she is moving on into the quarterfinals. So big high five there for Gabrielle O'Brien, ending Lakey Peterson's run here at Sunset Beach. I'm sure we will look to hear from her and get some thoughts on her on her heat shortly. But in the water, we have our final heat of the afternoon because we just heard from Renato there calling it after this heat between Betty Lou Sakura Johnson and Caroline Marks. Caroline just having a birthday a few days ago. Yeah. So happy belated birthday. And this is a good draw. Uh, both these are young surfers. Um, you know, this is the future of women's professional surfing, these two. Uh, goofy foot against regular foot. Uh, you know, local against East Coaster. Um, you know, so there's a, it's a good matchup. One of the best backhands on tour is Caroline Marks. So this is, I like this matchup. And it's a toss, you know, a coin toss for me is who's going to be able to take this yeah, I agree. Point of difference, I guess. Caroline, small little rights. We know she's not. And then Betty Lou's obviously probably spent more time out here over the years, but she also has like a crazy forehand hack. And she's not scared of any, you know, lip oncoming section. She's very committed. So And just yeah. back on tour again, right? So has felt that mid year cut nightmare, right? Does not want that to be the case. So that feeling has got to be. Right? I, yes. I mean, you could see it on everybody's just kind of like, if you get a bad start, you're like, oh my gosh, I, you know, so I, I got I three events left and everyone's like, I mean, look at even like a, a Gabby and a John and old John has I mean, Lakey, got, just unfortunately, right? This is going to make her it, have it. It starts like, you know, best four events out of five, like it, can, it happens fast. Yeah, it sure does. Betty Lucifer Johnson making sure she gets in the action fast. Look at her hit the lip exactly like you were talking about. No fear in that maneuver and just the one section. But again, like we've been saying, sometimes the judges want to see how committed you are on that first maneuver. How impressive. What's the wow factor on that one? And Betty Lou in her first wave putting a little bit of punch. Yeah, quick transition, right? And that's one of the things I think she's carried. And that's youth, you know, just speed, something that they uh, are always going to have. Tatiana Weston Webb trying to gain some speed on this wave. A little one maneuver again, but that is her eighth wave ridden in this heat against Katie Simmers. Katie now taking off on just her third wave of this heat. Nice little carve there. Hits the lip, comes back down. Looking to see if there's another third turn from this wave going back into the whitewash, trying to reverse it to see if there's anything here. Looks like it could stand up for her again. And one more finishing maneuver from Caitlin Simmers. So a patient pursuit of this wave, waiting to see what is it going to give her and still seeing if there's anything on the inside for her, bringing it all the way practically in the beach. But look at just how patient she's waiting. She's like, I want to see and rewarded for it with a nice little closeout hit off the lip. We got to check the bottom of that board. She I got know. a foil on it. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, she just glided. She was, like, trying. arms down just barely, like, like yeah. and it was just flying. Through right? the, the it literally flat. looked like a foil, and that's, like, so cool because like, even the, the turn outside, she just glided through the cutting. Caroline Marks on her second wave of her heat gets in that one first maneuver, and now maybe taking a note from Caitlin Simmer is going to wait and see how this develops. Carve back into the whitewash here. Another little carve. But that is all that wave is going to offer her. But that's a really interesting note on Caitlin Simmers. I feel like she was, I mean, patient is the word that keeps coming to mind with how she just wanted to wait and see. It was like she was like curiously waiting. I What's this wave going to do for me? Like, not even like she's gliding through it. I mean, watch this replay here. Look at this cutback even. Just the rail is sank. There's such great flow. And she does not look like she's working very hard at all. Yeah, that was like effortless as they say she she surfs like Look that right here you know, like very calm she's just skippering across the top no worries a little slash then yeah right here this part she fades back clicks the whitewash and then she's kind of like well i might as well just stand with it it's like one of those you know it's not why i may but when they come through the yeah. inside it's just that little glory run and reading the energy is, is a big part of it right just knowing where those little pockets of energy are at 
you know, it's, it's like foiling. You need to just be on it. And she's somehow, and she's going to get another half point probably out of that turn. It was like a nice finish. Right? So you know, five, seven, six is what's needed there, too. I feel like, you know, hey, is that extra half point going to be enough to turn the heat? And she still has time. Well, the first cutty was nice, and she said she wanted to do some cutties, and then she, yeah. the second turn was committed. So That was a 45-second wave. The truck just timed it out. Crazy. 45 seconds. That's a long wave. Simmers oh, was wave on that wave. <laughs> or maybe for that the season, sure. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, impressive. Sure. Incredibly impressive. Also impressive, Gabriella Bryan making it out of her heat. She is on the glass with Laura Amber. Yes, she is very happy. We were just discussing how much better a quarterfinal is than a ninth place. You got a few ninth places last year, but this is your second quarter of the year so far. Yeah, I would say it's a pretty good start. Um, quarterfinals are great, and um, I want to go further, so I'm really excited. And uh, yeah, hopefully we get some fun ways, and yeah. <laughs> a third place here last year. You obviously are really comfortable at Sunset Beach. Today, tricky conditions, but you got the job done. Talk us through it. Yeah, it's so tricky. I mean, it's pretty good point, but it's just so inconsistent. So. It's hard, and at the end of that, heat mother nature played into my favor. Um, it would have been nice to ride a little bit more wave, but uh, yeah, when you get them, they're fun. They're just so far and few in between. And the surfboard you're riding is actually the board you won Margaret River on last year. So how have you kept it, kept it in such good condition from then until now? Yeah, this is my trusty 6.0. So um, I don't know. I just I, I know it's good, so I just bring it out when I need it, and it's it's done me good. So um, yeah, if it stays like this, I'm riding my 6.0 and uh, has has good juju. So we're gonna stay with it. <laughs> Needs a security guard. Yeah. We'll get it home, keep it safe, and we'll see you in the quarterfinals. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank the security you. guard. That's something we didn't talk about yeah, the other day, Pete. <laughs> All the ways to keep board those safe. magic boards safe. <laughs> She's Make been storing that thing in the ice machine. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> I would actually like to put mine in a helium tank. <laughs> oh, that would be a good right? idea, huh? A pressurized helium tank. Keep it, like, light. Yeah, yeah. Huh. <laughs> it's very interesting to see how that plays out. All right, let's see how this one plays out. This is Caitlin Simmers up and riding again, a 4.97 for that 45 second wave. So she's now looking for a 3.86 to advance against Tatiana Weston Webb. What do you well, think I would that? say that, uh, that Caitlin, you also throw in the fact that she's probably, you know, uh, what, 110 pounds? You know, pretty, pretty light. So that also helps to have that glide and that extra quickness. And I, I did like that. That was a, a nice sharp turn you know comparatively to her 307 she may have turned the heat here i mean this is a smaller way but look at the roundhouse she didn't quite go all the way back around and then picked it perfectly and just zapped that lip and that quickness and transition uh, is a point of difference that'll be her. that'll be interesting because that it's close to or maybe better than her last wave almost just it was shorter and smaller but nice carve and then this turn was very bigger section on coming and then clicks it right there a bit more committed than her other wave so um, yeah, it's going to be close. I, you got to. I mean, I'm. I, I like her. I like her shot right here to get it. She's trying to improve on that 3.07, but needs that 3.86. And that's something even Tyler, after her heat, she was telling me that so much of this is feeling out. Are you, are you being judged on the size of the wave or how critical the maneuver? And she said that she was sort of feeling that out in the in her heat. I think it's it's both. Right. It's trying to find those those waves that will allow you that. But I think it's kind of uh, yeah. So very similar score there for Katie. Some thought it was better. Others thought it wasn't. So that's kind of how it goes. Um, Four point eight three, which is totally fair. I think she uh, Katie just looks like to me she's kind of going a little faster than everyone, a little smoother across these sections. And that wave was just kind of a smaller one. It looked like she kind of was rowing and she saw that and got those two maneuvers so that puts her into the lead so like, nice to see what this response is going to be from uh, from tatiana because yep. she would have just gotten that information and knowing now she'd move down into second after leading the heat the entire heat you know what does that strategy do now well and also what katie's going to do right? i think she felt like i'm i think she found that wave too under tatiana and it was probably you know it wasn't a great priority wave you're kind of looking at it like oh, i can't go on this with priority but Katie said, I'm going to roll the dice, and she saw that she was able to manufacture. So Tatiana does have priority. She needs a 4.97 out the back to now advance past Katie Simmers, who got that 4.83. So her last two ways for Katie Simmers, that 45-second ride of 4.97, and then that one much shorter but very critical maneuver that she did 
a 4.83. So Tatiana is certainly going to be taking all of that in, knowing that these were the last two scores from Katie, and this is sort of what the judges did with them. It's a perfect example of you can you can get scores a couple different ways, right? And, you know, and there's certain ways you just got to ride what's in front of you and manufacture and, and try to produce what's something that the judges are looking for. If it's speed, power, and flow, and that wave calls for that. If not, it's high impact moves, then it calls for that. Wow, this, this is, is a nice little cuppy wave right here, but gets a little stuck behind. That's Caroline. Yep, Caroline using her priority to force Betty Lou off of that wave. So now nothing doing for Caroline on that wave. She is looking to improve a 0.5, but she'll want to get rid of that anyway. So Betty Lou Johnson now in the lead. She has a 7.93 total and priority because Caroline decided she wanted to use hers on that wave, which ended up not being anything that she's going to want to keep on her scoreline, Pete. Yeah, well, both of them actually got quick ones. And uh, I think, yeah, go ahead. That is great for, like you said earlier, like for the for the people watching at home, and a, and a lot of them are avid surfers, but they know length of ride isn't isn't everything. But yeah, you can ride an eight second wave and get an eight, and she rode a forty five second wave or forty whatever it was and got a four. So it's kind of like it's it's that quality in, in that short window, yeah. you know, and it's. Obviously, sunset can be a long wave, but it's still what you do in those in those power pockets. And are they tied together properly? No, that's you know? that combination. I mean, you look at the elements of the judgment, right? There's combination major maneuvers. There's speed, power, and flow, innovation, progression, uh, degree of difficulty. And those are basically the elements that the judges will use uh, throughout every event on tour. And then there's specifics within that uh, for Sunset Beach or for Pipeline, right? Um, and you know, there's a text that goes out to all the competitors that kind of spell it out for you, so you can kind of start to focus on it. And I really like, like yesterday, for example, where the men, you saw some of the biggest numbers that they were surfing to that criteria text that came out for everybody. All you know, the long held of rails is what's gonna, you know, they're gonna see that at Sunset Beach as something that you're gonna emphasize in the scoring. And you know, the surfers produced it, and the numbers came. Well, now the surfers waiting, wanting some waves to come here, particularly Tatiana Weston Webb sitting with priority out the back in the priority heat. Five minutes, 45 seconds to go. She needs a 4.97. Certainly no stranger Tati is, though, to performing under pressure. Last year, she got a ninth place finish here at Sunset. Katie Simmers coming in as the rookie, just feeling like she's just owning surfing her style. And we're watching that style develop. I got a chance to cover some Challenger Series events with Katie last year, and it's cool to see her just directly translate to the CT. She's not gonna change who she is, not gonna change the way she surfs because it got her to this point. Yeah, she she definitely flies by the, you know, the beat of her own drum and, and the, her style. I think that's what's so unique about her. She's obviously only 17 years old, which is super young. Um, she's learning a lot. Like Pete said, she she declined a year. Here's Caroline on the backhand. Speaking but, of someone we got to see surf very young on her backhand. Here she goes back into the whitewash. Another big hit off the lip for Caroline Marks. Swooping carve there. Hits the lip yet again and sees if this wave has another for her. It does. So Caroline making the most of that getting to the lip as many times as she possibly can on that wave. She needs just a 2.93 to move ahead of Betty Lou Sakura Johnson in their heat, 24 minutes left on the Yeah, top. that was uh, exactly why she's so strong on her backhand. She's able to draw such tight arcs, uh, this perfect type of wave that for her to be able to showcase that talent. Um, a bunch of snaps, you know, again, you know, it's quality over quantity, but even though uh, that was a smaller wave, there was some quality turns in there. So as she's gonna turn the heat, you know, very close one, obviously between these two surfers, but that was a nice wave for Caroline uh, in this non-priority situation. Yeah, it was like the gift that kept giving. Nice snap right there, kind of wraps it. And then all of a sudden she saw she's she's deep on the reef and it's a smaller way, but like you said, it was kind of went rapid fire right here, in and out of transition. And, uh, you know, under priority, I mean, that's, that's a keeper right now. You know, she has the 5.0, which was one nice maneuver. And then right there, she got three or four, you know, combinations. So it'll be interesting how they decipher that then it'd probably be pretty similar right so there wasn't a bunch of you know one high impact move which we saw the five but this one's going to probably even could even come below it uh even with the, you know the rapid fire right so again just the wave will dictate what you're going to be able to try and score it um and there's a couple different ways you can surf a wave to get the numbers caroline's scores just beginning to pop in definitely going to better that 0.5 by a long shot she ends up with a 4.63 moving her into first place over Betty Lou Sakura Johnson trying 
to make something happen there. Big hit off the lip, which couldn't stick the landing. So a big fall there for yes. Betty Lou. But again, man, we just see just her commitment to trying to hit the lip as hard as she can, get vertical as much as she can. Those high impact, risky maneuvers, Betty Lou seems to just thrive in. Yeah, and well, this is like, she saw that this was the most critical section she was gonna get on this wave. So she threw it up there as quick as she could, didn't have a ton of speed. And that's always difficult if you don't have a lot of speed when you're going into a section like that. It's nice to have extra speed because you can kind of lip line and actually judge where your landing's gonna be. She just threw it up and let the lip just kind of throw her back out into the flats. So There's not enough speed to, to pull out. Yeah, it was almost like the wave's moving faster than you are. And when you're up there, it's like you, you don't have that speed to get down before it, and all of a sudden you're just free falling. You could see her, it was like her front foot started to give way yep. and got away from her. The board it's just that. sort of got behind her. Important moment here for Tatiana Weston Webb. Yep, Tati with priority out the back. Two minutes to go. She needs a 4.97, so she does want to make it the correct wave that is going to provide enough for her to get the 4.97, which would be her best wave of the heat, despite the fact that she's ridden eight waves to Katie's just four at this point. Tatiana identifying this one as the one she thinks can get her a 4.97. Big move off the lip there to start. Another swooping car back into the whitewash, trying to do a little bit more critical section, find another critical section here. Hopping in to see if this way is going to bring something up on the inside. It does not. So she needs a 4.97. Is that her best wave of the heat, you guys? I would say that it needed more at the end, and I think she even knew that too. Um, you know, it was a good start. There was that nice, you know, crisp hit vertical off the top. You know, it wasn't a super critical section, but it just felt like she needed to have, you know, combine these maneuvers here. I mean, it was a, we're down to a minute, right? There was just a full redirect and then a nice snapping car, but then just felt like one more turn would have been enough to maybe, uh, you know, in a, in a better section than what that last turn was. Uh, so I feel like it might come up a little shy. Yeah, without the without any kind of major finish on that wave, I really think it makes it tricky. She, she read this wave really well. I thought it could be the one, because sometimes those ones start off foamy and they go clean through the inside. But uh, she had the right idea. The wave just, just let her down right there towards the end. So she's looking for a 4.97. In order to advance, she has 30 seconds left. If that wave does not do it, she has 30 seconds, but she is going to have to find a wave under priority. You see Katie Simmers paddling over. I'm uh, pretty sure that's just to get a little bit closer to yeah. Tatiana West. Got priority. Got to cover it. You know, it's yep. part of the strategy. I didn't think Katie would do that. Uh, you know, it's funny because she does <laughs> have that kind of carefree attitude. Yeah. Like she doesn't like this competition thing. It's just kind of part of, you know, what In I'm doing. In the juniors, I was always like, I wonder if she even cares. Like she wins that. She's so good. She wins everything. But you, it's good to see that and just being smart. And it's not like you're just doing your job. Yeah. You know, you yeah. have priority. It's like just be near. Take the next. If it feels like it's a good wave and a five, you take it from her. So Katie Simmers and Tatiana Weston Webb just wrapping up their heat. The rookie getting the win over Tatiana Weston Webb with a 9.8. So we will see her in the quarterfinals. We'll be right back at the Hurley Pro Sunset Beach. Here goes Golden Gilmore. Wow, beautiful slice right there. Carissa Moore in the yellow jersey, throwing a lot of spray out the back. 
Betty Lou, a.k.a. Shreddy Lou, carving back to the whitewater. Gabriella Bryant, nice wall in front of Gabby. Oh, and a big turn off the top, committed turn. The quarterfinals here at the Hurley Pro Sunset Beach 2023 starting to get filled in. Just waiting to see who's going to go against Caroline Marks and Betty Lou Secura Johnson. Who's going to go against Katie Simmers in quarter number four? We have Grisa and Molly, Stephanie and Tyler, Carissa and Gabby. And up on the wave right now is Caroline Marks. She is in the lead against Betty Lou Secura Johnson, but up and out of that wave pretty quickly. So the priority switches to Betty Lou. She needs a 5.2 in order to overtake Caroline Marks, and she has 17 minutes to do it. Yeah, this will be a back and forth little bit here at this back half, you'd imagine. Um, hopefully the ocean provides a little canvas for these two surfers. I mean, you always like to see that kind of unfold. Um, but, uh, you know, good call. This is our last year of the day. You can see the Kona winds, you know, that kind of more southwest angle, the lumpiness in the lineup. I mean, uh, you know, forecast-wise, we're supposed to see kind of good south clean winds all day, but there was the moment that they may see it turn around a little. It's just uh, kind of that way, and so it's a good call to save the quarterfinals for a little better day. What do we call it? Is this an atmospheric river? Uh, <laughs> no, actually, I would say uh, that was pretty wet. And, it was uh, uh, raining all night last night. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh! It was pretty wet. I mean, it was definitely. Uh, yeah, it, it was. It, I guess if you're going to call it atmospheric air, yeah. But I mean, usually it's the jet stream coming up and it's just yeah. feeding moisture into into a, a California. Yeah. Gets those rivers but here it was more like a little monsoonal low Monsoon, yeah it looks like that next few days it kind of sits like though it's not super windy but it just kind of sits over the islands i lived in the northwest for a few years and we got many an atmospheric river from like november to march it was just you're constantly underwater up there in the pacific northwest but made everything very green in the summers and here we are in beautiful hawaii where the rain does the exact same thing so Katie Simmer is coming out of the water victorious, having punched her ticket to her first quarterfinals in just her second event as a CT rookie. An impressive way to get it done against Tatiana Weston Webb, one of the fiercest competitors on the CT. Katie Simmers, though, making it look just pretty chill, normal day in the office, and that's sort of just how Katie rides her waves. She never, yeah, is she never, I mean, from my experience watching her she never really has shockers like she's very consistent for how young she is she's she's consistently like putting up good numbers and i mean that bides well for any competition but for here at this level i i think we always wondered how will she stand up against like you know ladies that are a little bit taller and stronger and she's she's faring well so far so um pretty impressed i mean i'm not surprised but I'm impressed by her her performances so far. Well, she's so young too, right? There's certain levels of pressure you get on the championship tour, not only from your other competitors, but the venues that we have, you know, there's all these legacy venues. I mean, Pipeline's intimidating, you know, for a youngster, you know, 17 years old, having to go and have to perform at Pipeline and Sunset Beach for that matter. So you start off the year uh, with two, one of the most critical events um, of the season, especially when you've got this bid season cut thing happening, you know, only five events in. And I loved that from Katie in her interview before the season started. She was when she asked what was her goals for the year. I'd like to make the cut. Do a couple cutbacks. Do a couple cut. <laughs> get barrel. That'd be cool. Barrel. A couple round. <laughs> I mean, and I good. I mean, she is so young, so she can kind of have that kind of uh, a carefree attitude and set the bar kind of you know mid size up the, the ranking things. Because I, I think ultimately, I mean, way back there, is she's won the world title. I mean, that's that's why you're here. Yeah. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson had to deal with the cut last year, wants to avoid it as much as she can this year. She is looking for a 5.2. Caroline Marks up on a wave now. Nice hit off the lip to get things started. Finds another section to work with. Vertical, another final hit on the lip. Or she tries to identify another section to hit again, and she does. So wow. a few nice... Nice turns on that one. And that trouble was, in the streets right there. And, and she's still going. And Betty, you know, Betty had priority, and she took the first wave of the set, and then to see this behind, and it's just a full connection for Caroline, you know. And sometimes having priority, man, you pull the trigger, uh, and and that happens where the next wave is just a little bit better. And sure enough, I mean, that's going to put um, 
Betty Lou in a little bit of a, a tussle here because that's that was the best way to beat. Yeah, I think Shreddy Lou was thinking that first one might grow on her and get her a couple turns, and she did. She surfed the wave well, but then you, you kick out, look behind, and there's a four footer and Caroline's on it, kind of rule her edge. She was able to kind of go in and out of turns. It's it's gonna be the best score of the heat. So yeah, she's gonna she's gonna be looking for maybe a six or a seven. But Definitely. plenty of time. There is time. Let's take another look at this wave from Betty Lou. So draws it right here, kind of wraps it, wraps it back. Good flow. This oncoming turn right here drops it right there. So that's kind of her patent turn. And then she looks. This one kind of little slash right there for Caroline. Better right there in the pocket, up and under. And then she, she kind of comes around the corner right here. It was real patient and gets a nice finish. So, I mean, anytime you get that, Good start, good finish. It's gonna go on the good wrench. Yeah, it's yep. true. I mean, it's gonna be the biggest number we've seen here in a little bit, so. And it is a 7-0 for Caroline Marks on that last wave. So now Betty Lou looking for a 7.57 with just under 12 minutes to go in this heat to try and find it. But the judge is pretty consistent. You had one who was giving her a 7.5, but everyone else right on the money you guys called it just the best wave of the day caroline surfed it the best wave of the heat excuse me caroline surfed it incredibly well and she had that really good start really good finish and made some moves in the middle as well so caroline increasing that lead over betty lou sakura johnson 11 30 left in this heat caitlin simmers is on to her very first quarterfinals as a ct rookie she is standing by with laura <laughs> ennifer yes i'm down here with a very happy katie simmons relieved as well you know Tati had the control for most of that heat, and with 10 minutes to go, you switched it up. Talk us through it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't call it a heat win. I'd call it a heat make. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Yeah, it was like in the beginning of the heat, I kind of had a plan to like get a bunch of waves when I'm under priority, and then she kind of did that, and I was kind of out there sitting. like I don't know. And then... Yeah, I just saw like a little double up thing with a wedge section, and I was like... Okay, I'll just go on this, like, under priority. Ended up being, like, a 4.9 or something. <laughs> I'm still yet to get a 5 this event, so maybe next seat I will. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just tried to find a section, I guess. And you're into your first quarterfinal as a rookie. How good does that feel? Um, yeah, it feels good. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like this, the past couple of events, I haven't really surfed how I wanted to. So hopefully, like, we'll get some decent waves and I'll get to surf more freely <laughs> and less stressful, but yeah. But we love to see the intent, you know, at the end of that heat there, you know, you were chasing Tati all around the lineup, showed how much you obviously want this. Yeah, I kind of like saw her get a wave at the end and I was like, okay, it's over. And then I saw her like, pout, she got out so quick and I was like, oh my gosh, so I started like paddling my eye as hard as <laughs> yeah. I could to the inside just to get her, but yeah. Tati like can get a five in her sleep, so <laughs> I was just, you know. Well, we love to see it, and we are very looking forward to watching you into the quarterfinals. Hopefully some bigger waves coming through so you can unleash what we know you've got. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love that from Katie Simmers. Raw. It's just like, she. Does, yeah, sometimes interviews feel like they're kind of thought out. She's very, like, oh, in the moment. happening right then and there. Very you know, and I, that's yeah. how she is in the water too, which is uh, it, it's a great way to, to surf. Very, she meant it not freely, you know. And that's I think with with a rookie, you kind of come in, you have these expectations, of what it's going to be like, and then all of a sudden, it's almost better if she can just keep in that rookie mindset of just nothing to lose. I'm learning and just and go with it, surf free. But as you get better and as you start to, you know, analyzing everything, right? I agree. The expectation that you you do expect, oh, the waves are going to be pumping or whatever. I, I'm not, like she said, I'm not surfing like I want to surf. But if you're making heat, sometimes you just want to ride that wave. Because you could surf good and lose, too. And it hurts as much, you know. So it's important to, you know, learn. She's young, but she's got good people in her corner. But learn. Take that win. Don't don't worry about what happened. And maybe you're not surfing like you want to. That will come if you surf more heat. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think so much of it is the adaptability, 
right? Like that's what the veterans talk about all the time is you can come in with a plan, but you have to adapt well, to she what did the that. ocean is going to do it. And I mean, she she said, oh, yeah, I'm going to go out there and be busy. And all of a sudden it would just flip the script. Just all of a sudden, you know, that was the same plan that, that Tati was going to have. But it worked out for her. I mean, she was patient. She held on to priority. She held on to priority through the transition too of that heat, you know, where previous or she moved into the priority heat. And all of a sudden now you've got free reign in the lineup. You don't have two other surfers going to take waves from you. Caroline Marks enjoying the fact that it's just her and Betty Lou in the water. This is her seven point ride, her first seven in a competition since J Bay last year. She got a pair of seven point three threes. Caroline yeah, in she, form. Yeah, well, she she was out for a while, um, you know, had to come back from injury. And it's it's been a little bit of a transition for her. You know, I don't think it's been easy a comeback after this injury. So this is nice to get it, see her get a good solid number and also a good solid heat win. I guess especially against someone as strong as Betty Lou. I mean, you come up against Betty Lou at Sunset Beach, it's a, that's going to be a tough draw. So she's able to kind of, this is going to be a great win if she finishes it out. We still have time, seven and a half minutes. But uh, it could be a great win for her, uh, and get, especially getting into the fourth final. Yeah, Betty Lou still has seven minutes to find a 7.57, which would be her best wave of the heat by a long shot. She does have priority out the back, and it's going to be interesting to see just how she approaches these final seven minutes because again you take into consideration caroline's wave wasn't necessarily she was decently long wave but you saw katie simmers got a five she still has time to get two waves if she wants to or if she if she can find them so that that number just gets a little smaller yeah it would be soon. nice to, to hear match the seven at least close to it yeah. right gotta do it soon i mean time is running thin and you know i think that seven might be the best wave of the day possibly no has there been some higher higher scores but i know the 757 will possibly be the wave of the day so it's gonna have to stand out and it's gonna you know it's gonna have to be those big maneuvers that betty does whether it's it's gonna probably have to be two of them yeah um I would agree. bigger wave possibly so it yeah 615 to go there you know there's time i wouldn't put it past betty i mean she's uh we've been seeing her she put if she times one of those right and then there's another section you can go there was the second highest wave of the day. Steph Gilmore got a 7.5 as oh, her so final. Did, right on her yep. final wave. Yes, exactly correct. on her final wave. I was wave. out there when I was in the channel. I'm like, I can't. I can't yeah, yeah, just you were out there. Huh? Yeah, I was underwater. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. We'll give it to you. But still, Caroline Marks, an impressive showing in this final heat of the day here at the women's round of 16 in the 2023 Hurley Pro Sunset Beach. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson. Hoping the ocean delivers her something that she can make a 7.57 on it would be the best wave of the day if she can find it. Brett, in these situations, right, you've got five minutes to go. Like, you know, what what is this kind of the self-talk that you think? I mean, you've had tons of experiences where you've had to have a number at the end of a heat and have priority. Like, what are you telling yourself? Well, you're, you're just, you're believing in yourself. You're looking for that wave where it pops up and it gives you that feeling like this is it. Like, you, you do these drills nonstop to go, okay, I'm in this moment, I need a six or I need a seven. And you, it, and once that wave arises, it's like that gut feeling like I can get it here, but it doesn't always happen. Yeah, right? you, but you mentally, you're going, okay, I trust myself that you you're mantras? just hoping you you're going to get there? this. I, I trust me. I've had a lot of times Different. where I'm like, it's not going to go. You're, you're actually <laughs> like, <laughs> it's going the wrong way. It's unraveling. That's what we call it, right? You're unraveling. Yep. But I mean, in, in this situation, she's telling herself, I put in all this work. I, I understand the situation. Now it's getting down to four minutes. It's kind of coming down to like, OK, I might have to do this on one wave. So she might she might sit there for the next four and, and she might find a chance. She might not, you know, so that's the cookie crumbles. Let's see how we got here. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson with a 4-4-3 and a 3-5-3 on her score line. Yeah, that was a 4-4-3. She really hasn't had a solid backup. And that was just really, unfortunately, that error on that last wave with the 3-5-3 to me because it gave uh, Caroline the opportunity on this. I mean, she had priority in that moment. She took the first one, and sure enough, the second one was this wave right here because Betty Lou, I mean, it could have been a full flip of the script with just that decision right there in this heat. Yep, this was a 7-0 from Caroline Marks, the second best wave of the day only to the GOAT, Stephanie Gilmore. So that's not a bad person to have be the only way better than you today. Betty Lou Johnson now down to 340 left on the clock with priority. She needs a 757 to advance past Caroline Marks. Just celebrated her birthday a few days 
Coastico Caroline did. Would certainly like to punch her ticket to the quarterfinals. That would be a pretty sweet birthday present here at Sunset Beach. Sure would. You know, again, especially when she's just now kind of getting her feet back uh, after, you know, taking this, that time. It was a lot of time. You know, she took some, she was able to get a wild card, but then, um, you know, it just didn't have the greatest. And as soon as she was back in the jersey, it didn't come easy. <laughs> so it's been some work to get back to her, her top form. Betty Lou and Caroline both scanning the horizon, trying to see is there anything coming in, anything I can see with three minutes left on the clock. Betty Lou again with priority, so she really is is waiting for something special. Somehow. Yeah, Caroline's trying to make her life miserable by every <laughs> little movement. She's going this side to that side, this side to that side to try to get her to make a decision. See, she's oh, waving oh. for a call there. I don't know. I, I think she stopped early enough. Yeah. The wave, in my opinion. The wave again, really wasn't there. And if Caroline switched it. They wow, did. Wow. If Caroline Man. it's a tricky one because another mistake that hurts. If Caroline lot. really wanted it, neither of them could have caught it. Right. In a way. It looked like. I mean maybe, but let's watch that again. So here we go. Betty Lou with priority. I don't know. Stops man. it. Caroline immediately puts her hand in the what air think, asking for the priority switch. She begged the judges. for it and she got it. <laughs> You know, I mean, I, there was, I mean, there was some, there was some urgency to the paddle. I get that, but I don't know if that was complete. the urgency was to the urgency was to like maybe get in position for it. But it was like she pulled. I felt like she pulled up when she knew, like, hey, I'm not there in, in Caroline. Well, she's really like she there. stopped paddling and put her arm on the top of the nose. Maybe it'll work first. Some of there's waves coming. Here come some waves. So now Caroline has priority, but Betty Lou looks like she was going to try and take off on that one because now. She is in a spot where she needs to make something happen under priority. Again, a 7.57. And you mentioned, Simba, the games that so Caroline has been, the strategy games that well, Caroline's been playing. You do a, she did a great job by sitting underneath and kind of, like I was saying, going back and forth. It just makes your decision miserable because you're looking, you're very, like, analyzing every little wave to, to see if this is it. And throw a distraction it's out there, just right? distractions and you're yeah. like is this the wave she's kind of you, she's it's trying to do her job to bait up. it you know and and it she she got the job done there she did and that's part of part of the strategy you see shinobu on the beach there mom of betty lou sakura johnson feeling a little bit of stress now shinobu has always told me that she does not get nervous watching betty lou but I, I don't as know, a parent I it's hard there's, there's <laughs> yeah. really no way Right. I mean, there's always a little bit of nerves. You're, you're surfing with your, your sibling or your kid. Yeah, I mean, I know the feeling. It's, yep. <laughs> it's yeah, you you just, I'm sure for her, is like, get that opportunity. You want yeah. that opportunity to perform. And I know that's always hard for parents. It's hard for brothers, sisters, friends. It's like you just, yep. sometimes it's not there and you can't perform. But that's, that's the surfing life. And you have to, you just... You really attack every moment you have because you don't know how all these heats are going to pan out, you know. And opportunities slip by. You learn from it, and you try to you try to move forward and, and not let it happen again. Oh, there we go. No. Caroline Marks using Caroline. her priority with eight seconds left to go, just mostly to keep Betty Lou off of this wave. She has a seven and a five on her score line right now, but you see her looking back. That was merely a decision to keep Betty it was off like the wave, and she did it. The back half of the heat worked out perfect for her. Lost priority, held it, caught a wave with 10 seconds to hold. That's like, perf it, it, I mean, it worked out for perfection for Caroline. Yes, and it did. the opposite did. for Betty Lou. Yeah. Yep. So she is on, Caroline is, to the quarterfinals. Thank you, Brett Simpson, for joining us. We had a blast. Pete, 805 Post Show, coming up next.
Welcome, surf fans, to the Hurley Pro Sunset Beach. Beautiful gouging turn from Ethan around the corner again. Flawless. Favoring these lefts and launching into the air. Wow. It is the 805 post show, day four of the Hurley Pro Sunset Beach. We had women's round the 16 in the water and a little bit of a drizzly day. Maybe some blessings from above. The Hawaiian word for rain. Ua. <laughs> That's today. I got that in today. I'm Kaipo along with Megan Abubo, Strata Wazaluski. Strata, I'm going to go to you for your thoughts on today and the women's round of 16. Buzzer beaters. That was what my thought for today. Everybody uh, right in the end, everybody, you know, doing what they needed to do to get, and it built drama for these heats. And that's something that, you know, you, you look at a day like today, you've got subpar conditions, but all of a sudden you're locked into these heats because right at the end, anything could happen. And we saw that right from the beginning with Brisa. Yeah, well, for the most part, Megan, it was the usual suspects. A couple of upsets, but for the most part, the usual suspects advancing into the quarterfinals. It was, but I think what played to their favor was the experience out here at Sunset. Um, it's not an easy lineup when it looks like this. And, uh, you know, I, all the um, surfers that made their heats today, they really played it smart. They surfed smart heats. Yeah, and speaking of the usual suspects, the GOAT, eight-time world champ, Steph Gilmore, had a challenge against local girl, Zoe McDougal, Megan, but you know what? Steph Gilmore, silky smooth as always. Yeah, Steph looked really good out here. Um, she was quick, she was on fire. I uh, love that she, every single turn she she did in the pocket, she was constantly searching for those little nuggets that would give her the score. And again, surfing real smart. But she looked like she was on a little bit bigger of a board, but I mean, she just ironed out all of those uh, you know, bumps in the water. I was just so blown away by how well she made the waves look, or how good she made it look. I mean, she was surfing unbelievably smooth, so hats off to her. Obviously, she's the GOAT, but to, to see her go out there and stomp it down was awesome. She stayed busy out there. 13 waves ridden for Steph Gilmore, and what's glaring right now is we look at the numbers, that 7.5, that was the highest score of the day. And uh, so Steph Gilmore, she, you know, that's why we call her the GOAT. Um, so we'll see her in the quarterfinals. Yeah, it's, um, I love Steph at Sunset. This wave is very pleasing to the eye for watching her style. Open face, beautiful arcs and turns. And like you said, Kaipo, a little more length and it looks good on her. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, past champion, she's definitely looking for another one. Speaking of past champions, Carissa Moore's won here at Sunset before. She's in the yellow jersey in her matchup against Luana Silva Strider. Carissa Moore, just solid as always, no matter what the conditions. Patient, you know, waiting for it, and then, you know, sees the buildup coming and, and drops into it. So I think she knows how to shift gears as the wave shifts around on this reef. So that's something that you really have to understand and, and utilize your knowledge and timing. And that's what it's all about, you know, because she's putting together great waves uh, uh, out here with timing and, and knowing when to load up and when to just crack the corner, when to back off the gas, sprays her opponent in the face. Beautiful work. All right, so let's take a look for finals day as we eye up our quarter finals. And uh, I'm not going to call you call for picks, but I am going to say, <laughs> who do you think is going to have the advantage right now, Strider, as we look at the eight remaining surfers? Well, I, I mean, I'm gonna, I'll take the first one, Brisa Hennessy and Molly Picklum. This is going to be a heater. I feel like Molly has a little more fire uh, against Brisa's smoothness, depending on the wave size, but I think Molly's going to have the, the shoe in there because of the wave size. All right, well, let's get to the interview because uh, quarterfinal number four, Caitlin Simmers against Caroline Marks is here from Caroline with Laura. Yes, Caroline must be stoked to get through that one. You've been dealing with a few things the last few days that have, uh, you know, put you in not tip-top shape, but you're pushing through and you got the win, you're into the quarters. Yeah, thank you. It's been a, an interesting last week with the flu and then a crazy earache and I just, I haven't really been, been surfing that much. Um, so I didn't really know how I was going to surf out there, but um, thankfully, um, thankfully I was able to find a few waves. My board felt nice, and um, yeah, really stoked. And what were you riding out there? Um, I was just riding a 5.8 Mapaiolis driver 3.0, his new model, and uh, it felt really nice, little round tail, and 
Yeah, it was good. And coming up against Betty Lou, you guys have lots of good battles over the uh, years. So obviously a tough opponent, but good to get the win. Yeah, for sure. I've come up against her. I, I actually had her at pipe in the exact same round. And it was a really grindy heat. And um, we it was super close. And she got me there. So I, I really wanted to beat her and um, have a lot of respect for her. So I'm sure it's first of many battles with her and I. And um, yeah, it was good. Amazing. We'll rest up and we'll see you into the quarterfinals on finals day. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Yeah, quarterfinal number four is going to be Caitlin Simmers and Caroline Mike. Speaking of finals, they let's look at the brackets for our men's quarterfinals. I'm going to ask you the same question, Megan. I'm going to ask Strider, but for the men, not a pick, but who do you think has the advantage out of these eight surfers for finals day? I'd have to say Jack Robinson. He's with the momentum for pipeline. He's looking smooth, looking good, and really focused. Strata, you can chime in. You know what? I, I love this draw. I feel like it's a lot of new blood in there, and that's what makes me really excited. Obviously, your, your veteran in Felipe Toledo is somebody glaring at me in there, but I just, you know, this thing's going to go either way. We're going to have kind of like head-high conditions, I'm feeling, for finals day, and that's something that's going to play into the picks here, you know, on that day. And you got to imagine, these guys are all those young guys have got so much fire and flair inside of them. I think we're going to see a new champion here at Sunset. Okay, so we're looking at finals day, and uh, let's take it to Surfline. With their forecast, let's pick it apart and see what we got on the map, Strider. Well, you can see us there sitting in the middle of that big Pacific Ocean as the swells come in, but that northeast arrow right there is our nemesis. So that's pushing down on top of us. Then we've got that other arrow from the northwest coming in, and that's what we're waiting for. And we're hoping that that thing comes in and gets through all of that northeast chop and the wind and the rain and delivers something for us. And I'm really hoping that I think around, you know, Sunday we'll see some action on that, you know, if it says right there, four to six, four to seven, that's our day that, you know, we're in the yellow, which is offshore and clean. Conditions will be nice. Let's hope that swell shows up. We could be pleasantly surprised with even more because it's coming underneath the, all that rain and all that weather and all that wind. And we could get some really nice waves here for finals day. Yeah, we got 14 heats now combining men and women to get to the podium and crown a champ at stop two on the championship tour. Well, guys, Let's get into the top five today. Number five, Caroline Marks. This was the second highest score of the day, a seven point ride for Marks, Megan. Yeah, Caroline looking super quick on her backhand here. I love the look, um, just searching for that good section, you know, and always jams it on her backhand, Caroline. She's looking great. Wouldn't have known she was under the weather. Number four. Caitlin Simmers, the rookies in the quarterfinal, Strider. I love it. Skating across these little waves out here, effortlessly gliding across the dead zone uh, to finish waves. You know what? Lady is on fire and not feeling any pressure as a rookie blasting the tail out. Watch out, WSL women. She's coming for you. <laughs> Two-time world champ, Tyler Wright. It was a hard-fought battle. It came down to the last wave between her and Macy Callan. That's number three, Megan. Yeah, Tyler Wright showing why she's a former world champion here. Uh, Tyler, her board's looking so good, and she's looking very fast out there. Um, I feel like we're seeing a rejuvenated Tyler Wright this year. Coming in at number two, defending champ, Brisa Hennessy. Took it down to the last wave to overcome Sally Fitzgibbons in the opening heat of the day, Strider. Yeah, it was really fun to watch those, those this two-turn combo, you know, right here where she just drives into another turn. So she did that on both of her scoring waves, uh, stacking up multiple maneuvers in a critical part of the wave, and that's something that's going to get you through. At number one, Steph Gilmore with the highest single wave of the day, a 7.5, 13 waves ridden, and the GOAT doing GOAT stuff out there, defeating Zoe McDougal. Yeah, Steph Gilmore, we saw what she did right as soon as she lost at Pipeline. She came straight to Sunset, and we've seen her clips all week. She's looking good. She's looking right at home. Steph's staying across the street. Um, she's got to be the one to beat out here. World champion form right there. I mean, I, I just can't say it. I mean, she, she had a bad start last year. She had a bad start this year. But now look at her right back into the driver's seat. Watch out. All right, well, thank you, Megan.
Thank you, Strad. We're looking ahead to finals day. Remember, check in. WorldSurfLeague.com, 745 Hawaiian time for the call. With that, I'm going to say aloha and enjoy today's highlights. Aloha kakahiaka with a double shaka and a big mino aka. That art, dude, that was two sick. Jumping four by four. Hey. Shot it came with the best fan, got the bench press, but she want more. Molly Pickham comes off the bottom, bang, right into that vertical section. Eight time world champ finishes it off. Slashes it. Harry's happy too. Yeah. The rookie getting the win over Tatiana Weston Webb. Good combinations there from Caroline and get one more. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.